everybody! It's Joe from Joe's Computer Museum, and I'm here streaming for once. I actually have content on my channel now. Ah! You know, people tell me I should do shorts and things, and I just don't remember. I'm just doing my thing and forget to actually, like, create and share. So I had a project I wanted to work on in the background, and I figure I might as well create and share with everybody. So here we are tonight. Thank you all for stopping by. We got a lot of super cool people in the background. We got Rudy and Garth and Jeremy and Eric and Ron and Mark and Bruce and a whole bunch of other different people in the chat. Thank you for stopping by to watch me as I goof off with Joe's Computer Museum shenanigans. So super quick background things to take care of while we are doing this before we get into the actual fun. So uh, processing data. What was I going to, I forgot even what I was going to say. I just said what I was going to say and I forgot. I'm getting old. Can you tell by the gray hair? Um, Yes, channel stuff. So thank you for stopping by. If you want to subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my channel. If you like what like my content, hit the like button, blah, 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 blah. Um, I also have a website called jcm-1.com where I sell nifty little trinkets like blue SCSI units that will help get your old Macs up and running again. Also, keyboard encoders for Apple II and Apple III computers of literally every description except the Apple II GS. If you have an Apple II or an Apple III or even an Apple I with a dead keyboard encoder, I got your hookup. Holler if you hear me jcm-1.com. Um, you can follow me on the Twitters at Museum Joe. And that's all of the stuff. Now, I did invite some of my patrons to uh, stop by tonight, and we have one in the background. It's Garth! Hi, Garth! Hello. How you doing? <laughs> Good. Awesome I'm working song. on some, uh, I'm making, I'm putting together a bunch of After Dark modules together, in a, like all of them that I could find together in one package. So I'm going to post it in a little while. So that's that's right. You said uh, on one of the other streams you were gonna you were gonna do that. That's right. That's gonna be super cool. Well, when we're done, maybe we can put that on this thing that I'm working on over here. Ooh, yes. I am building a blueberry tosh. Now, many of you are aware, my followers are aware of this guy I made last year. It was a little late for for Halloween, but I did get this made. It's called the pumpkin tosh. It has the amber screen and it has orange lights, so it's a pumpkin. However, I wanted to do something uh, a little extra cool, and that is called the Blueberry Tosh. Now, I decided to stream before I was even ready, so I don't even have the camera ready to show you this um, because I'm, like, the worst. Um, so stand by, and I'll get that camera set up. Basically, it is a Mac FX clear blue case. Justin's here. Hey, Justin. Um, it's a Mac FX clear blue case um, that we can throw some lights in, just like this one, and make it a blueberry. So that's the idea. Um, let me get my side camera working and actually do the thing. Is that the IP address? Yes, it is. Side cam. Good. That's working. Then I can click on that. So that's this guy. That's this one right here. So the trick to doing this is getting these LED strips. Now, these are, these are called chip on board LED strips. And they have tons and tons and tons of LEDs super, super close together. And they run on 12 volts, which is good because it says 12 volts in it. And so we take these and stand by. I have to get bits and pieces. Bits and pieces to the rescue. We take it and we string them along the inside of the back chassis with a little bit of hot glue because that's really the only way I found to get them to stick correctly. And then we hook that up to 12 volts and turn it on. And it glows. Speaking of Mac effects, $1.99 super sticker. Woo! Thank you, Mac effects. And thank you for the awesome blue case that you uh, commissioned and worked with like a billion different people to get working. That is awesome. That is what makes us able to do this thing. It is the coolest thing since, I don't know, sliced bread. Is that what the kids are saying these days? I don't know. So that's what we're going to do. But there are some tricks to this. We have to be careful with this. Um, if you look at, if you saw for the two seconds it was actually on the screen, the thumbnail to this video, this whole thing takes two and a half amps. 
that's like 48 watts, like two and a half, 36 watts, something like that. It's a lot of watts. That will make this explode. <laughs> so what we have, and also it's way too bright. It's like uber bright. So what we have to do is we have to do some prestidigitation, so to speak, some calculation to figure out a resistor that we can put on the end of this to reduce that current level so that A, these glow at a nice whatever, and B, it only takes like a watt or two watt, 12 watts, whatever. Voltage, watts, amps, stuff. So, yes. Now exactly. a raspberry case. Ooh, that would be cool. I think it would be more like a strawberry case because I don't think that Mac Effects made like a purpley one, but they did make a bright red one. And of course, um, we have, um, what's his name? Um, Adam, Adam McG made the Hulkintosh, which was my inspiration for the, for the, um, the, the pumpkin tosh. So, so we have to do some calculations. First things first, we have to figure out, we have to do some measurements uh, of how much of this is going to fit in this case. Um, and so we do that, if you see, at each one of these little, um, maybe you can't see on camera there. At each one of these little points, this is a point where you can actually use a pair of scissors or a knife and just cut this into sections. So we would have to count the number total of number of sections that would fit in, in the chassis down there. Um, and the easy way to do that is I've already done it for the pumpkin tosh. So we're going to just grab the pumpkin tosh and shove it up here and count the, count the segments. So if you're wanting to do this yourself, that's how you would do it. So I'm going to grab Mr. Pumpkin and we're going to, we're going to count one, one LED segment. Up, uh, up, uh, up. Uh, uh. While I'm doing that, Gart can talk a little bit about um, After Dark if he likes, for anybody who doesn't know what After Dark is. Yeah, so After Dark is the, the awesome screensaver, right? Everyone knows about flying toasters and stuff. So I picked, up, I picked all the After Dark modules I could find online, like relatively easy at least, and put them all together in a um, setup that basically just drag and install and it works. I test it with 7.1 and 761. Works great. So I'll post that in a little bit. And then uh, people can, I would say, I don't know if it'll work on black and white mic, Max, at least not all the modules. It includes the uh, version four um, app though. So that will work back to like, I think at least system seven. So this, this will work great on your, your, uh, your LC slabs and stuff. And <laughs> slabs. Everyone likes those slabs. Huh? There's, they're really hot. One, two, three, four, five. So yeah, we're going to add it. these up. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I'm calling it Macintosh uh, or uh, After Dark Mo Mundo. <laughs> Mucho. <laughs> Lame. <laughs> now, there is one last segment. Now, I counted all the segments on the case, and I'll explain why you need to put them on this case and not the front. And I'll explain why in a minute. We'll show that on this here. There's one last section, which is here, and it's on the main board. And it has to go on the main board for reasons. Oh, stop shut up um and that is how many segments i can't see it it looks like it's four so we'll just call it four so altogether i counted 35 segments so we what we can do then is cut 35 segments out of this hook it up to the power supply and see how much current it draws and then play around with resistors until we get to something that doesn't blow the computer up because blowing up a classic mac uh, we'll get have everybody in the chat being like, oh, that's cool. And then, oh, my God, what did you do, you evil, evil man? So we need to take care of that. Um, so we need to count 35 of these. 35 segments. So it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, this is... So if I cut that, yeah, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35 segments right here. So we can cut right through that stuff. As long as you guys can see what I'm doing here. I'm not sure if you can really see what I'm working on. So we take this stuff. We just cut right through it right in the middle. There's actually, if you look carefully, there's a line sometimes you can see there right there. Now that is one usable segment. Okay. 
So now what we can do is we can power that up with the supply and take a look at the current that it takes. That gives us numbers we can work with. Of all of Joe's guests, Garth has sent me the most Mac stuff. Yes. Garth is, <laughs> is that right? Garth is Sorry. a cool guy. He's super helpful and very resourceful. And there's a lot about Apple history, so that's good. Um, so what we do is we put this on the power supply to figure out voltage. Now I have to set the voltage up. Not 25 volts, that'll break it. That's 12 volts, and then we set the current to max. We'll wait to see what it takes. This uses 1.4 amps, so that's a lot. So that is at 1.4 A. 1.4, well, we'll say 1.5. It's actually interesting, you'll see this number creep up. I can actually show it to you. As they they get hotter, LEDs use more current. So as these sit and warm up, they'll get hotter and hotter and use more and more current. So, But 1.5 is a good number. So we need to knock that down to something a little more amenable. So we're going to start throwing resistors at it until it figures it out. So we have to be careful with this, though, because we don't want to throw a resistor at it that's so low of a value that it'll drop too little, it'll pass too much current that it'll explode. So let's turn the voltage down, and that'll give us an idea of numbers that we can use to calculate with. So we're going to go here. We're just going to turn it down to like 11. Now, 10 is way too low. You can barely see it. But 11 is a good voltage, and that is half an amp. So that's 11 divided by 2, basically, would make that, how many watts would that take? 11 times 0. 0.6. 100,000. 6.6 6 watts. So that's a lot of wattage to put through a single resistor. Um, however, that's not the wattage we have to worry about. It's the wattage it's going to drop from the, one point, uh, from the 12 volts to the 11 volts. So it's basically 1.5 times, or it was 1.5 amps, right, before. And then we're subtracting 6.05, so it, or 1.5 minus 0.6. So it's dropping 0.9 watts. So we need to put four resistors together um, uh, to make sure, uh, four like quarter watt resistors together to make sure we don't blow them up. Now, the cheatsy doodle way would be for me to look into pumpkin tosh and take it apart and figure out which one it was, but I don't remember, so we're just doing it this way. So I think 11, 11 volts is good. Now, we can also try dialing it down a little bit more. So let's actually take a look at how this looks inside the case to get an idea if it's too bright or what. Because it's not, it's not really there to illuminate the room. The purpose of it is to make the Mac look pretty. So it doesn't have to be hella bright. So we can do this and then we can crank this down by small amounts of voltage until we get a good value. Now if you look at that, it to me that looks like way too bright. I don't know about you. But it looks radioactive. Yeah. And I mean that's cool. But again we have to work within the limitations of the power supply, not explode our stuff. Um you guys can't see that. Let's because my name is in the way. There you go. It looks a little too bright to me. So what we can do is we can go to the voltage and turn it down by like half a volt. Now that still looks good, right? And now our usage is a quarter of a watt or a quarter of an amp. So that, that, that decreased the current usage by more than 50% just by going down half a volt. So what we'd have to do is calculate what that voltage drop there is going to be. Um, I don't remember how to do it exactly, um, but basically, yeah. So 10.5, 10.5 times 2, uh, 0.25. So that's using two watts. Yeah. Yeah. So we're dropping quite a bit. Now, 
we need to calculate the actual volt uh, voltage drop. So it's we're dropping how many volts? So it's 12 minus 10.5. We're dropping 1.5 volts times 0.25. Yeah, it's like a little over a quarter of a watt that we need to actually drop, technically speaking. So how are we going to do that? I don't know. Um, I'm trying to remember how to do my Ohm's Law crap, and I'm bad at it. So I'm just going to throw resistors at it till it explodes. Um, I'm thinking that we probably want to start with a 500 ohm. Uh, Jeremy suggested that, and I like that. So I'm going to start with like a 560 and see what happens. No, First my, up, able to my upload up. that Macintosh Garden failed. Oh, no! <laughs> I didn't say the text I typed. Oh, I'm an idiot. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Copy, paste, got it. Right, I know. So we're just going to kind of wrap this resistor around the end of this. <laughs> and we're going to put it in here. And that is barely moving any current whatsoever. It's not getting hot. That's good. So now we've cranked this voltage up to 12 volts. And that is nowhere near enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's not getting hot. So that's good. Um, I can see this glowing. You can't see it on camera, but it is glowing. So we uh, 500 is too much. So let's let's go down a little bit, shall we? Um, I also have a better way to connect to this. Let's use yes. We can use that. So let's cut that in half, right? Let's go down to like 27, 27. Hello, 270. Hello. Here's 270. You guys can't really see what I'm doing, so let's kind of get in here. Show you the business. The cool side is this. If this explodes, the resistor will go up in flames. Fire. <laughs> there we go. There's a 270, and it's still way too not bright enough. And this, I'm just checking to make sure it's not overheating. If I can put my fingers on it, it's fine. <laughs> ohms, but you don't want to fire in your computer. <laughs> yes. So let's go down one step more. Let's cut in half even more. Let's go to like a 110 or a 120 or something like that. Oh, I have 120s. Uh, yes, I have all of the resistor values from 10 ohms to 5 mega ohms. <laughs> I've got a wall of them just for doing stuff like this. All right. Is this enough? It's not quite, not quite, still not quite bright enough. It's not hot. Cool. See, it's glowing, but it is, it's just, you can barely, barely see it, right? It's just barely. And I don't think that's bright enough. So let's go down even further. So that was what, 120? Let's cut that in half. Let's go to 68. 68 ohms. Oops. We just need to get, we basically need to bump right up against the edge of the, um, the max wattage value of the resistor itself. Okay. That's 68. That looks pretty good. We're, we're getting there. If it's not burning uh, up, maybe it's close enough. Yeah, the camera, the camera isn't doing it justice. It doesn't look quite bright enough to me. It is just barely visible uh, through there. You gotta have that knob where you can turn it up so it gets brighter and brighter. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. That is a thing that can be done. That'd be dangerous, I imagine. <laughs> 8-bit fever, fever dreams, trial and error method. Boo! I want to see 10 pages of theoretical electromagnetism. This is not a Dave Jones video. This is not EEV blog. If you want that, watch Dave Jones. I'm not that smart. Like, I can, I can figure it out if I, like, take some time. Um, but I don't want to. Uh, let's go... I'm going to cut that in half again. We're going to go down to 33. 33, I think, is going to be pushing right at the edge of what we need. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. 
I don't know nothing. I know nothing at all. Okay. Let's try 33. Still not bright enough. Not in my opinion. What's chat think? Do you think that's... Potentiometer. <laughs> yeah, a potentiometer would be useful if I had one. Mac effects. It would be cool if you had a key combination to adjust the LED intensity. Ooh, hmm. Interesting. Is that a hint? That would be weird. Is that a hint, Mac effects? <laughs> how would you do that? <laughs> how would you get... Yeah, hmm, I hmm. wonder how you would do that. I don't know. Nobody's figured that out. <laughs> okay, screw this. I'm going all the way down to 10 ohms. Which means I have to go all the way around here to reach it. 33. Uh, yeah, we'll go like this is literally the lowest value I can go to. <laughs> it's the smallest value resistor I have, other than like a coil of wire. Um, so we'll try ten. Yep, it's within the uh, wattage capability of the resistor, and I think that looks good. I think ten is about right. What do you think, chat? Think it's good? Ten. Ten. Alex. Hi, oh, Alex's tech lab. Yes. Two times 10 ohms in parallel. It is drawing, this is a quarter watt resistor carrying a current of 0.16 uh, amps. So the resistor isn't even hot. Burn. It's not even warm. I'm not worried about it. The LEDs are getting warmer than the uh, resistor is. So I'm not even worried about that. Like I'm feeling more voltage through my fingers because of everything in here is grounded than I am heat. So I'm not worried about it. It's a good level too. It looks pretty good. Five ohms. Yeah, and if you ha yeah, if I want to do five ohms, yeah, what, what you start doing is you put them in parallel. And what that does is that that gives you the same, it gives you the same resistance effectively, but it drops it across all three. Smoke emitting diode. Yeah, that's what happens when you break a light emitting diode. It turns into a DED, a dead, a dark emitting diode. So we're going to go with that value right there. And we're just going to set that to the side because we need to do a whole bunch of other prestidigitation and fancy foot footwork. Before I forget, I need to turn the voltage of my power supply down because I use this to do 5 volt stuff all the time. And I would hate to plug a 5 volt supply or something that takes five volts, I'd hate to plug you something in or yeah, give it 12 volts and like blow stuff up. I would do that. Um, so the next thing is we need to figure out where all of these, these strip -a doodles go. And I've again, already kind of figured that out. Um, am I zoomed out? Yeah, so we, you can see me work. So basically the best places in the clear cases are to run them above the midline about here in this area. On the top, you can kind of run them anywhere up in here. It's fine. You can run several lines. Same on this side is to run them above the midline. And in the back, there is one little spot, if memory serves, that is approximately right here. That's a good place that clears the housing for the fan and clears the power supply. There's some space right in here. There's not a lot of space down here um, because there's bracketry and stuff in the way. And on this side, or on both sides, really, below the center line is the frame that holds the logic board and stuff in place. It's the kind of this angled frame. Um, and yeah, you can see it right here. Below the midline, you have to be careful. So you want to keep it above a certain line. So what we can do is we can actually put this on the chassis and then just mark some lines uh, on on the uh, plastic with a removable paint pen that I can just use alcohol and remove the paint. And that lets us know where we can put those. So we're going to do that next. This actually goes pretty quick uh, when you're not, you know, talking to the camera constantly. Um, not that I, I'm not saying that I don't love talking to all of you because you all are all awesome. I'm writing out after dark module names. <laughs> it's exciting. 
so we're gonna put that stuff in there. Go to, over here, do that. So you two, go over here, and just go away. Go over here, not in my way, thank you. So we're gonna put this together. And now we can figure out where all these bits and pieces go. So I'm thinking that just like we did on the blueberry or on the uh, pumpkin tosh, that we want to follow this angle, this this angle here. These are these angles are somewhat parallel to each other. So I think if you follow it back like in that direction, it looks the best. If you go straight across, it clashes with the with the angling and it looks weird. So that's pretty easy to do. This one we don't, as long as we know it goes there, we don't have to mark it. It's this one here where we have to figure out where things clear, right? So what we want to do there is we're going to get a paint pen and we're going to mark it the same color as the plastic, only if and only if because uh, if the paint pen doesn't come off, right? Bye, Roger. That case looks dang good. Yes, it does. Um, if we, we're going to mark it with a paint pen that's the same color, so it, in case it doesn't all come off, you won't notice it. So the main thing is, is we've got to be, we've got to, uh, the framing here on this side, it's hard to see through the case. Maybe I can get the lights off and it'll actually be more visible. Yeah, that's more visible. There's this angle of the case right here is on the outside. It's too close to the, the plastic here, this metal this metal frame. So you have to avoid all of that. So you're really coming in like right beside the CRT, right along here. And you want to follow that line down. Now, on the back, you have to be kind of right in here because you have to, again, you've got to clear the power supply and you've got to clear this, this uh, case right here. So I think usually the best place to start is right here because this is your most limiting selection. So you put a, basically you snap a line straight across that. So I'm going to do that real quick to do. Very, very carefully. While I do this in the dark, because then maybe, hey, or you can see better, but I can't. Yes? Hey, question. Have you ever tried putting LED lights on the inside of the metal parts, like along the edge of the frame and stuff? Like there's space run where the floppy would normally be in stuff, the hard drive? So it like all just glows and says, so you can't see the yeah, light directly? Yeah, right. And glows um, inward. That is a really good question. Um, it, it, I mean, it'd be weird, weird to run it, obviously. But. Yeah, I put a lot of thought into how to do all this um, when I did Pumpkin Tosh. So that's why I'm kind of like doing it the way I'm doing it. When you look in here, where I, where's my little strip of LED? Where'd I put it? I'm losing things already. See, how can I lose <laughs> this room at 16 feet by 16 feet? It happens all the time. I'll just get some of this. Oh, it's right here. here. So the issue is, is like the plastic for. Yeah, I see the, what you're saying. I can already see what you're saying. There's only a limited space. And yeah, like it, you could do some around the frame for the floppy. And that's yeah, about it. The paint <laughs> sits right in here. So you have to be like out yep. here in order to get it like inside there. Right. Yeah. And then it's sitting next to the monitor and stuff. And no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way to like get it to be parallel this way to the front because it's going to interfere with the casing. You can sort of get some up at the top here. You can get some small stretches, but then because the screw holes are here, you can't get you can't get it around it. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. It's you can't get it through here and have it face any normal direction. You can kind of have it facing down or up this way and kind of get it in there. But I think it loses a lot of its effect then because you're going around all these nubs and stuff. You, yeah. again, you might be able to get it to sneak down through here. But then you're also going to want to run stuff along the side as well. Um, we'll just take this as the extreme example. What do you do on that side? Yeah. <laughs> this is cool double side tape, right? And you could just tape it right there. And that's neat. But what if you got to service this again? It's all taped to this. And then you're having to like create disconnectable connectors back here. So if you remove this, this comes off with it and it's, you don't have dangling wires and stuff. Yeah. Not, 
not a huge fan of that prospect. The other thing is this. This is the other thing I thought of when I was designing the pumpkin tosh. So say you're sitting here and you're looking at this and you're trying right. to use it. Granted, the screen's pretty bright, but it's not like, oh my God, bright. Put that right there and think about that. If you sit there and try to use it, yeah, it's going to sit there. burn your eyes out. <laughs> you sit there. You've got blinding blue light yep. in front of your face. Or orange or whatever. Same down here. Or like right here. Yep. That's why for the front, on the on the pumpkin tosh, I did opt to put some in there it, on the pumpkin tosh, but it's on the main board. It's, it's on the actual logic board itself. It goes right along here, and then it taps into 12 volts. But this, I put a higher value resistor on, so it's not as bright. So yeah, I remember you had to hack it into the motherboard down at the bottom, yeah. Yeah, so that's, <laughs> that, that was my thought process. Now, like, I'm not here to tell anybody what to do. I'm just kind of sharing. So, like, if like if you want to try to find some way to hack a doodle, like, see see the strip here? The, um, well, no, you can't. Yeah, make connectors and something, right? <laughs> yeah, so the end right here where the, where the, where the solder bit is, that's the only part that you actually have to leave right. on there. You can cut all the, with an X-Acto knife all this white stuff off and leave just that cob array on there because those those uh, those um, conductor strips are all along the back. So you can make that as thin as, as thin as that 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 LED strip and get it in there in farther places if you really wanted to do that. You could. You could. So, but. That's that's not how I opted to do it. I opted to make it look neat, but also when you're sitting here and using it and staring at it, it's not like ah, <laughs> right, right. So that's just that's just my that's my theory. That's my theory of operation. So anyway, yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, you're like I wouldn't put a strip at the top. best to match the pumpkin chosh or Joe's pe keeps post place to keep both machines. They're siblings after all. Yes. Uh huh. Yep. 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 Yeah, I agree. Um. Did I just hear a baby go? <laughs> that was you. <laughs> yeah. So basically, that's 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 that, that's how ah, I keep hitting the the armature thing on this to move it. So that's how I plan to do it. It just I think it it's the best of all the possible compromises. But again, I'm not the boss of you. Cook it however you want. Do or don't like put resistors in it and watch your computer blow up. I mean. I won't be responsible if you take my suggestion and burn your house down. So. That said, I think we need to mark the back first because that gives us our starting point. So let's put this back together. They used to use fluorescent tubes back in the 2000s, <laughs> right? What's that? Probably, remember these fluorescent tubes and stuff? Little. Oh, little yeah, 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 yeah. Jeez, that was a completely different time. Yeah, we had a demo computer at the place I worked. That was a uh, had a uh, the side cut out of the case, and we had a fluorescent on it, and and then need a little more room to work here. I'm going to move this standby. This is my test board. Go over here. Thank you. Kind of put together. So again, we want to start by snapping a level line across here. I would say basically smack in the middle of that. So we're going to do that. Cathode ray pink. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to put this on its front. I kind of wanted to show show putting the line on there, but it's hard to do while it's facing the camera. So we're going to do this. One. Why is this not going together? What is your actual problem with fitting together? There we go. So this is easy. We just take a, we just kind of eyeball this one, and we take our straight edge, just snap a line across there, just like that. So that tells us, eep! Um, that tells us, you know, right there where that needs to go. Right, we got a line straight across. Now we could take measurements and say it's exactly X number of millimeters and blah, like whatever. I don't care. Um, no offense, but I think I prefer an opaque case over see-through. Well, you know, Jeremy, 
they're if you don't have a see-through one like this, they're all opaque. So you you know you, you're covered, man. You're covered. So the next step is is to figure out a line from this point here, which is basically about right here, that is parallel to that. So we can make we could take some measurements and figure that out, or we again we could just kind of eyeball it. Once we eyeball one, the idea would be to then measure it and make it the same as the other, whatever. I don't care. You know, I'm not the boss here. Um, so I'm thinking that's about right. Right? And so then the other one we know goes right there. We don't have to worry about doing measurements there because we know that where that is. Now, here's where we do the measurement. We can figure that out. From the bottom, it does. It doesn't have to be an exact number, but basically, if you, uh, this is at the eleven mark um, from there. So we can do that same mark on the other side, and snap our line, and it will be the same on both sides. Right? Right. Of course it will, because I'm Joe and I'm smart. I'm smart by doing things like without actually any any science. So um, <laughs> trial and error, right? <laughs> so we're gonna take this. It's marked the same way. It's perfect. We put a tiny dot here. So that means we have to go from here to there. And that way it will be at the same, same angle on both sides. Right like that. Boop. There we go. And so the, then we know we want one there and there, kind of across there. And on the pumpkin, I also put a couple at the top so it would like glow that way. What you could is, in theory, you can also put those reversed. On the pumpkin, they're pointed up the way, so they glow out the top. But on the top, you could flip them over so they glow down into the case and illuminate the inside of the case. On this that might one, be cool. I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm going to flip the flip that over on this one. And on that, it's probably not going to bleed out forward too either because your CRT's in the way, right? Exactly. So on the front. You know, those go approximately here or on the top. Um, but we can face those down the way, right? So we will do that. And so we've got how many strips again? We've got one, two, three, four, five. And the pumpkin's got one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. So we need to cut those pieces out pre-solder them because we need them to be completely ready to go um, to put them in in their sections. Uh, basically, it's one big serial string, and so that's kind of how we have to do it. Um, but as it is, you see it's a serial string like this, but they're in different cut sections, right? So we have to figure out where our starting power is going to come from to plug it in and then string it together and yada yada. Um, so let me figure out those sections again. Did I have them still written down? Nope, of course I didn't. So we need to get out the pumpkin again and kind of figure out how that goes. I am cheating by using the pumpkin because I've done, already done all the figuring. I'm not going to like redo it all again. Um, so here's pumpkin, which would only look cooler if it had an orange case, but, uh, he didn't make orange cases, so. So this is the power for this, if memory serves, comes in right here. And when I did that to give me plenty of room uh, to make a long enough cable so when you take this on and off, it just kind of tucks in. Um, and it's over here in the space where there's the most room. If you put it up at the front or something, it's going to look ugly and stupid. If you put it on this back corner back here, you're interfering again with all this physical stuff. The cables could fall into the high voltage analog part and be a problem. <laughs> I don't know. So the power comes in here. It goes this, loops up like this, loops around, loops, loops over, loops down, and comes back to this side. So we would want to start here. So the order we now, because we have to pre cut these, we have to count the order uh, of these sections and what they go in. So this is a five, and then it goes to here, and it's a four. It's one, two, three, four, yep. Then a four. Five, four, four, four. 
Oops. And then we come around here, and it's on the back side of this. One, two, that's another four, then a five. In theory, we could put some, some more down here, but I found uh, during test fitment that you'd start to interfere with this corner a little bit and the screws over here. Um, this is on this side, there is very little space to hold that in there. So you have to be careful with the way you do that. So five, and the next one is it goes to the strip on the back, which is a five, one, two, three, four, five. And it's the exact right amount. Now, if anybody wants to know the exact parts or the exact LEDs I used for this, I can put a link in the comment doodle um, so that people can see that. Mm. 45 minutes and I haven't even done anything yet. Gee, many Christmas. Um, I just I just posted my After Dark screensaver collection. Yay! Do you have a link? Uh, yeah, I, I put it on my Twitter so everyone can follow me on Twitter. You can see it. <laughs> Go find Garth on the Twitter doodles. Let me see if I can find that link, Garth. Yes, there it is. You can uh, do copy link address. Is it going to be like a Twitter link? Of course it is. It's stupid. <laughs> Tricked you. After Dark Mucho. I love it. So here's uh, his link. Go get Garth's thing. That didn't sound right. You know what I meant. Shut up. Um, okay. So we can get these all cut together. Now we're going to put this over here because I have other stuff piled up there now. All right. So we get to cut these into their sections and then create the links between them, right? And the reason we need to do that is trying to put to to get these all hot glued in place in here, then solder them after the fact while it's inside here. Bad mojo. You don't want hot metal near nice clear plastic. <laughs> Make a plastic bag. So you want to pre-snip -pre -pre these and kind of get them stuck to the side, and then you can clip off the pieces of the wires for the links that you need to figure that out. So let's do that. Let's get, we need five sections. So we've got one, two, three, four, five sections, right? Uh, we want to cut that with scissors. Yep, that's five sections. And four sections, one, two, it's uh, one, two, three, four sections. And then one, two, three, four sections. And then one, two, three, four sections again. Ah, ah, Four. Four sections. Ah, ah, ah. How many of those were there? There were four sections of four, <laughs> basically. Yep. And then another four. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four, five. Two sections of five. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. And then we have a little bit left over. And this leftover is the part that goes on the main board, which we'll figure that out later. So now we start arranging things. Uh, first things first, I want to get this little this this piece of nub off the end of here because it's just in my way. So we just uh, cut that heat shrink off there. That's off there. Uh huh. It's underneath the sticky tape. That's smart. Good job, Chinese factory. Thanks. Um, and then we heat this up, and we get these little pieces off here, because we're not going to be using this lead, this leaded wire, we're using our own wire, which is thinner and looks prettier. Now the wire I'm going to use, normally you use red and black for positive and negative, but I'm going to use blue and black, black for negative again, but blue for positive. Why? Because it's blue and it'll mix in, you won't see it as bad. That's nice. my story and I'm sticking to it. Okay. So we will need 
this magical spool of wires that I have specifically for weird purposes like this. So what we do then is we can figure out what these uh, lengths of wire need to be. So we can basically just kind of peel off the ends of the, uh, the sticky a little bit, not too much, just a little bit. and kind of stick these in place on the outside of the case so we know what our lengths need to be. It's like cooking with Joe. Um, <laughs> and then I pull out the uh, pumpkin tosh and here's the finished product. Um, <laughs> so you start there, right? And you can just kind of stick that on there just to get it where you need it. If it'll stick. If I'll, you know, I got to do it correctly. Stand by. I'm not going to remove all of that, just a little bit of it. There, there we go. So we know that goes there. And then these are the fours. So we got one that goes here. This is the most boring part. It's well measured. Well measured. So here. I'm going to do this a very specific way. I'm going to use my little snipe, snipper snips, and we're just going to cut that off so it's just out of our way. Just go away. Because most of this, remember, we're going to be actually be removing. Well, I didn't say that. Um, we'll, I will remove all the actual adhesive off the back of this because then it leaves this blue strip that looks ugly. However, this is a blue case, so you wouldn't notice it. But on the pumpkin tosh, I didn't want all that blue, so I actually removed the adhesive. So here we go. Bye, Rudy. Running off to work, that poor guy. Oof. Of course, it's 5 p.m. for you, Garth. You're like, work just ended. Yay! <laughs> actually, I actually have to go. <laughs> I just realized I need to make dinner. So okay. I'll see you all. <laughs> but thanks for having <laughs> Bye, me on. <laughs> Bye, Garth. I got my, I got my stupid thing posted. Woohoo! <laughs> Good awesome. luck on your uh, LEDs. <laughs> thanks. Bye. It's just me. I'm all alone. So yeah, we're just sticking these in place so we can figure out what the lengths of these wires are going to be. Still 11 of you watching. That's cool. Remember, if you like the content, hit the like button. If you're not subscribed to my channel, hit subscribe. I do cool stuff from time to time. I've got lots of other cool stuff on the channel as well. I'm planning on bringing back the JCM1 single uh, board computer. I have a few projects for other people that have been keeping me from getting content done. Um, uh, no offense to those people. No offense was intended by saying such things. But once those things are done, then I'll have more time for actual video content. So it is what it is. I kind of took on a little too much work is my fault. So it's basically a self-made problem. So I'm complaining, I don't have enough content. And the reason is because I, I decided to do too many things. So come here, you... You fiend, do it. You cad. Oh my gosh. Seriously. Wow. There we go. This one goes here. There we are. And so this one goes across the back. And we had another, yep, yeah, we got another one that goes up here. This one goes up here. Goes up here. Mm -hmm. Like that. And then the final one across the back. Nice level line. JCM won for the win. Yes. Thank you to all my patrons and members who, who answered my questions about JCM one over on my Patreon. 
I still have more questions to come about that, about how to finish that project. That goes right along there, just like that. So now we can measure all these little pieces of wire that are little links that we need to make. So first thing I'm going to do is just make one long strip of the wire that I can cut from because that'll be easier to do. So basically we take the, uh, you can't see anything. We take the spool of blue, we take the spool of black and we bring them together. And basically I'm just going to twist them together here so they don't really go anywhere. Go. And then I just pull a huge length of it because this stuff is insanely cheap and I might as well. Doesn't hurt anything. Big, long extension of it, right? Just like that. Now we twist it together. And we make it a, kind of like a, a twisted pair out of it, right? So this takes a little while, but not too long. Basically, you just hold it, hold it kind of like this, like that, and you just twist it and twist it and pull. Every once in a while, you have to detangle the end there because it's twisting around itself in the opposite direction on the ends. And you just keep doing that. When you're done, you'll have a nice twisted pair. Stop twisting around each other. Stop it. If you separate them, you kind of like get these two pairs to be like these two wires to be far enough away from each other. They won't twist, or twist around each other. So. What's Joe breaking this time? I'm turning a beige Mac blue, Mike. We're putting big bright blue LEDs in the pumpkin tosh. Or the blueberry tosh, I should say. I'm so used to saying pumpkin tosh. It's just my default for a glowing, glowing Mac. Yeah put my knee up here to hold these two wires apart from each other so they don't twist together. Just making a twisted pair for our power lead. That's what we're doing. Yeah, so JCM, it'll be sad Mac in the end, lol. It'll be blue. Aww. Blue Mac. So JCM1, my hand is cramping up. Um, uh, for those who are relatively new followers to the channel, was my first big project I did for the channel. It was really my first big electronics project at all. It's what got me started with this entire electronics bench was I'm going to build, I'm going to design and build my own 8-bit computer that follows the rules I want to follow for an 8-bit computer, and it's going to be awesome. And I've learned pretty much all the way up to learning how to do Macintosh board repair. Everything I've learned was from doing that project. Uh, and it's it's basically, the computer is done with this, uh, with the exception of one major thing, and that's video. It has sound, it has serial ports, it has a processor, it has RAM, it has ROM, it has a key, it has a keyboard input, it has, um, uh, it has uh, stuff, thing I forgot, brain, whatever, brain, evening, brain. Um, the only thing it doesn't have is video output. It doesn't have any sort of true video output. Now, I did a whole like nine part series on how to generate um, NTSC video using nothing but TTL logic, figuring, well, at the end of that, I could hook that up to JCM1. 
And the answer to that question is no, you can't, you idiot. You thought you could, but you're not that good. So I need to think of a way to make that happen. And lots and lots of morning shower thoughts have gone into that process. Mmm, delicious cherry Coke this time. So here is our wire, which you can barely see. It's all twisted. So now we can cut these in sections that fit these, these links that we need to make. So the first section we need to make is going to be from this over to the power supply. And that's probably going to be long enough. So that's section one. Section two is from here to here. And so we want to leave ourselves a little bit of wiggle room. Don't need a lot, but just enough for installation, right? Once we solder those on, we need enough room to get things in there. So I'll leave that section about like that. That's section two. So it's going to come in here, go here, and now it needs to loop from here to here. So that's going to be a piece that's approximately like that. Section three. And then we need a piece that goes across from those two, which is going to be about that long. Section four. Yeah. And then we need to go from here to here. Section five, kind of like that. And then we need a section from here to here. Section six little bit of extra loop just to make it easy and then section seven just goes from here to here it's just one little link so a tiny little piece like that will do and that's it and that's all the pieces and now i've got enough extra wire in case i screw up so now we have to take all of these off of here and we solder it all together good luck with the rest of the wiring good night folks bye six b yeah i know this is a random impromptu wednesday evening evening stream, but it is what it is. So now we take all of these off and, and line them up in order so that we can solder all the bits together, right? So we're going to put that there. We're going to start with this, and that's point one. This is the nice long one that's going to go to our power connector, which I happen to have ready for already. What does one get for being a patron at the $1 tier? You get access, Jeremy, to uh, mostly just posts and things that I do, asking you guys questions, input, stuff like that. And then you also get access to the patron discord, where you get to talk to me literally all the time. Uh, I'm on there pretty much all day long. So, yeah, unless something crazy is going on at work. So we're going to take this and get this soldered. And it's grounded by bolts and yada, yada, yada. Easy peasy stuff. Cool. So I need my solder. We need the solder. I wonder if bench cam would be better for this. I don't know. Bench cam. Yeah, bench cam's slightly better for this. So basically, we're going to just solder these points on here. Probably want to do it this way. Yeah. Yeah, that looks better. So, solder, solder, solder. We may get this done tonight. We may not. Who knows? Add some solder. 12 volts and ground. Twelve volts. Ground. Okay. Repeat. A million times. Can kind of clean up those wires, make them look pretty. That's our main feed. So then that goes from here, and we do a 12 volt ground connection on this side. Solder that up. Yeah, something caught under the fuzz there. Stand by. There we go. 12 volts. Ground. That goes to selection section two, which is this one. So that's going here. Okay. Just 
strip the ends of the wire off with my fingernails because we can actually do that with this. And those little pieces of wire are a little too long, so we'll trim them. There we go. Yeah, it works better this way. So 12 volts goes here. ground goes here and we just do this about 15 times so those are the wires on the first section which go like this so now this has to connect to this side so we take this off you pretend that ground 12 volts yep so that's the shorter pair. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to put like a little knot in this side so I know which side's the entry point. There we go. Repeat. Hope everybody's having a good evening tonight. I don't get on Discord much. Drat. I'm sorry. I also do... Um, behind the scenes videos and stuff sometimes, Jeremy. I do polls, I ask questions, I share things. Uh, that's backwards, <laughs> that would have sucked. That is ground. There we go, this is 12 volts, there we go. So now we do the next section, which is this side. Ground 12. Next piece of wire. Ah, uh, quiet chill stream tonight. 11 of you still watching. That's crazy. Watch as Joe does nothing. Um, so, yep. Get this on here. It's on there. And this side. It's a little hard to do this backwards. Yeah, it's being stupid. Works better when it's done in this direction. Because then I can use my dominant hand for the soldering and just use this one to hold it down. There we go. Cool. So that's that piece. Which goes to here. Like that. So that goes to this side here. Ground, 12, ground, oops, I didn't strip correctly, and 12. Can you, like, do the thing? Thank you. Ground and 12. Ground and 12. And don't let go of it before the solder freezes. There we go. Cool. I do have one issue that I don't have the materials to solve yet. Lowering 27 volts DC, 5.7 amps, to 25 volts DC, 4.5 amps. I really wish I had that collection of resistors like Joe to figure that out. Yes. Late to the party. What are we working on this evening? Hi, John. We are working on making this into a blueberry tosh. We're gonna make it glow. Now these are LED cob strips or what they're called chip on board. It's basically a flexible uh, 
uh, flexible circuit board that's got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of LEDs on it that looks like glowing neon. And we're going to glue it to the inside of this case and make it glow blue. That is what we're doing. So that's there. So this is this one. So solder, solder. Next piece of wire, which should be this long piece. Yes, it's going to be this one. Yeah, because that one's this one. Yes. Got them mixed up because that's, that's the shortest one. Yep, for the corner. That's the one that goes from there to there. And then these two. Yep, that's this one. Same length as that. Yep, close enough. Close enough. Interesting little tidbit of information about the concept of close enough. If you ask a mathematician to take a the distance from point A to point B and continuously divide it in half, ask them when they will ever when they'll reach their destination. They'll say half, quarter, eighth, sixteen, thirty-two. You'll never reach there. But if you have ask an engineer, that'll be quarter, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, close enough for practical purposes. There we go. Those are connected. There we are. Do the next piece. This. If those LEDs were yellow, would they be corn cobs? LOL! Yes. The link, uh, the place I get these from are Amazon, of all places. Um, but they have them in multiple colors. It's the exact same product I used for the uh, for the pumpkin dosh, just blue. Now, in theory, you could have used white ones because the plastic's blue. It would have just been like a kind of a more whitish color. I don't know. But I opted to go with the color that matched the case. Solder together. All right, we'll do the next piece. We have to turn this around and get our piece off of it. It's this one. Middle aged man solders for an hour and a half. News at 11. Okay. White might have been washed out. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Wire stripped off. There we are. And so 12 and ground. 12. And ground. Ground. Next. Twelve. Around twelve ground those are on there. Next twelve. 
background. And this is this one. So that is this one. Did I put the wrong piece on here? I believe I did. I put the wrong piece of wire on it. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's fine. It's easy to fix. I need the short piece of wire on this section. Let's double check that by putting it all back together, basically. So that is this goes here. That goes there. This is the short piece. That's the longer piece. Yep, this is the short piece again. This needs to take the short piece, which is this one. Joe screwed up. Oops. It happened. Happy little accidents. Just make sure you catch it before you put it together. Joe will give a, a, a quiz on Ohm's Law. Yeah, if only to ask the questions and see if you get it right so that I know what the answer is when you're done because I forgot it. Okay. There we go. Let's do it again. So that this is the soldered section. So this goes here. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it does. There we go. That's better. Now we can connect this to this. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Eric is here. Hi, Eric. Joe's blinging out the Boointosh. Yeah. I am. If only I had, see, like if I had a brown one and a pink one with the blue one, we could do the, uh, the, we could do all of the General Mills, uh, spooky cereals. We could do like Count Chocula, uh, Boo Berry, and whatever the purple one is. Cool. So this one is the one that goes on here. Yes, it is. Because that's the last one. Yep. Because, yep, that goes to here. Yeah, that goes along there. Might be long enough. Yeah, because it's going to go right here. It's going to follow down like this. Go here. Uh, that piece of wire might be too short. It might be too short. So let's fix it real quick. Where did my hair is? Let's use a slightly piece of long, long, slightly longer piece of wire. We'll do that. I may have also used the wrong wires in the wrong places. Uh, Frankenberry was the pink one. Yes. Cool. Ground 12 again. See, now you know why I, I, uh, I made extra wire to accommodate the individual mistake. Yeah, that goes here, and this has to go down here. Uh, it goes this way. Oh, that wire was long enough. I just used, yeah, I just, I was measuring it backwards. Okay. Oops. Hi, my name is Joe, and I'm stupid. Um, let's 
get this done. This done. Solder smoke in the face. You're not a real man until you sniff solder smoke. Jeremy has a good question there for Mac Effects about other colors being available. I always love your impromptu streams. Always happens on evenings while my mind is done and tired enough to sleep. Yeah, uh, and also, uh, also there, uh, Mr. Mac Effects. You know, we've been very busy on another project, which I can't really tell anybody about because it's it's secret, and that's on hold right now. Um, not hold, but we're just in a, we're in a short pause on that. It's back there in the corner. I can't show it to you. Um, and until that comes up, what else am I going to work on? Fun stuff. So we're going to do that. And then one final piece of wire, because that comes down this way. It's this short little bit. It goes right here on the back of this. And that little piece of wire seems to have disappeared somewhere. I don't know where it went. It just fell off the face of the whatever, which is fine. We'll just make a new one. Got plenty of wire to do that with. Take a short little piece. It's probably on the floor down here somewhere. Who knows? Who knows? I don't. If I knew, I wouldn't be making a new one, would I? Nope. So we did that. Add the solder. Does look does look like Joe turned on his fan. No, I didn't. Nope. Or doesn't. No. I mean, I can. It's on now. Can you hear me? I'm here, Wire. You and I have a date with destiny. One last connection to make. That is to this one right here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The fan was noisy and then it quieted down. Okay. It's also blowing on me because I'm hot, so. This house is weird. We have to keep the upstairs at a specific temperature slash humidity. Um... There's the wire. I found it anyway as temperature slash humidity because we have a custom made harpsichord upstairs and it's completely made out of wood and they're very fragile instruments. Um, and so the temperature and humidity has to be very regulated. But the problem is, is this is a two story house and which means the downstairs is always some other weird thing from the upstairs. So when we regulate the upstairs, that means the downstairs gets like hot and stuff. So ever since we got that, it's been about three months ago or so. It's always been really warm down here. You know, not to mention I've got like five computers running at all times and two 3D printers cranking. And I probably got like 400 watts of lights up here and just stuff. Ooh, the white transparent color would be nice because that would literally fit any color LED you put in it. If it was like like frosted or it was like the blue, but like just kind of barely translucent, yeah, that would be nice because then you could you could just glow instead of instead of doing like uh, the lights like I've done here, you can go to extra lengths to hide them so the inside just glows and frosted. Yeah, you can't see where the light sources are. It's called like um, down lights, like uh, uh, running lights under cars. Where in Ohio, you're not allowed to see the lights, but you can make them shine off the ground, the undercarriage lights, so you could do something like that. Okay, so these are all soldered together. Now the, the, it, now what we have to do is we actually have to test this to make sure it's all lit correctly. First things first, we have to check every single connection to make sure that they are their right polarity, or else we're going to have a bad day. 
So I'm just checking that real quick. Yep. 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 Open ground, yep. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I can hear you. Yep. 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 I've checked all my polarities. I've double-checked my work. My work is good. It looks solid. So the next thing is, is we hook this entire uh, strip of wire or this entire strip of LEDs up to the voltage. We're going to hook them all up to make sure that they actually light up before we go through the entire process of putting them in the machine. Because wouldn't that be ground effects? Yes. Wouldn't that be like a pain in the butt is we do the whole thing and we find out like one of the sets of lights didn't work correctly. Uh, like happened to pumpkin Tosh. Um, so we're going to hook this into the power supply. Come here, you. Come here, fiend. Uh, this is 5 volts or 12 volts. Positive, I should say. This is ground. Turn on power. We crank the current up. That works. There we go. They all light up correctly. So I did something properly. I must have. Now we get to stick them in here. Yes, we do. If red, white, and blue were available, some week could have late July 4th, Veterans Day, Memorial Day in the USA. Red and white only for Canada Day. Yes. You can play Doom inside Crisis. You can play Doom on anything. Doom is an, imag is an amazing piece of code. Um, that's right. I need to turn the voltage down on this. And then the current. I limit the voltage and current on my on my default on my power supply, uh, so I don't when I'm doing five volt stuff I don't kill it. Um, a harpsichord. Every time you mention something new, it's a fat like facets of a gemstone. Yes, just like you, sir. I don't play the harpsichord. Other people play the harpsichord. Um, but yes, we also have a piano upstairs. Um, I play. A mean Van Halen's jump on the keyboard, and that's about it. Uh, Azul Ch Azu Chico just got here. What Mac and Mac Mods shows you? See an SE and SE30 and Blue Mac FX SE case, LEDs too? Yes! Azul Chico, which is funny, which means blue young one or blue little one um, in the Spanish or blue boy. Um, we are doing a blue Mac FX case with blue glowy LEDs. It's cool. So we want to be here because now we get to put this together. Uh, which is mostly all work in this. So this can go to the side for a minute so we don't like run into it with a soldering iron and cause cause uh, cause sadness. Sadness would be bad. And now we follow all of these lines that I put in here. So we're going to start by heating up our hot glue gun. Because I found that this is the best way to do this to get the lights to be visible from the outside. Now, in theory, you can just put these and just stick them this way on the case instead of gluing them that way. And then it will make the inside glow, but you wouldn't be able to see the lights from the outside. I don't know. It's a personal preference. If you put them this way, you can just stick them up and be done with it. You're not gluing anything because this is the sticky side and the lights will face the inside of the case. <laughs> Joe is an engineer who does engineer things. No, I'm more like an... I'm more like a tinker. Yeah. Um, not really an engineer. I just self-taught. Action Retro. Hey, a hey, Action Retro. We're making a cursed SE. Not really. We're just making it glow. Yep. Joe is like the most interesting nerd. Well, thank you. <laughs> I don't always drink beer. But when I drink, but when I do, I drink the one that makes me the most ner interesting nerd. Um, so we're going to do that. So now we need to, we get, need to get the long lead of this and we need to solder this to our power connector. That's going to connect to the power doodle. Um, I already got one ready. We have that ready. This right here, the yellow wire is our 12 volts. This 
uh, the red and the red wire is five volts. We don't need five volts. We're just going to cut that off. That's just going to get snipped right off, unused, off to the side. So we do that, and now we're going to want to have a little bit of heat shrink available because we want to heat shrink that together. So we'll have that ready. Okay, so we need to solder on this thing here. And we will be soldering on the positive end first because that's what makes the most sense. These do not need to be that long. They probably only need to be about how much wire they would do. I'm trying to think. That's going to be here. Yeah, it's plenty long enough. Plenty! Yes, Sean is an absolute professional on his videos. Um, uh, what was the, 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 B, the B video? Sean, by the way, that right there is running Haiku. It's running my little Haiku web server, in case anybody's curious. So, yeah, that his video about running, getting B up and running was great. Um, so, let's do this. Uh, yeah, we will chop that off so it's the same length. Cool. So, uh, where is my magic special magic hands? We'll use this. <laughs> it's holding a dead sound chip from a Macintosh LC2. <laughs> that goes over there. <laughs> um, that was just a repair for a client. Um, so let's get this soldered together. Pre-tin lead. We pre-tin this one here. Like this. And then we stick them together and remelt. And they'll just stick together. That's how it works. There you are. And we put a little bit of heat shrink over that. Don't need a big one. Probably this size. It just needs to clear the actual size of the resistor. That works perfectly. We only need a section that's about that long. Yep. Mm -hmm. we'll get that down here and ready. Like that. And now we snip this, in, this off and we connect that to the positive of this guy, which is way too long. So we're just going to chop those down. I need stripper. This is approximately an 18 gauge wire. So we're going to put it on there. Strip that off. Strip that off. These are called V-cut strippers. They have an adjustment and they strip anything, anytime, anywhere, fast and easy. They are my favorite type of stripper. You know, that's what, she, that's the, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a joke there somewhere. Anyway, moving on. So then these we also pretend. Is anyone passing through Arkansas on the way to VCF Midwest? Good question. Yeah, I think just about everybody subscribed to uh, Sean after the Cursed Mac. That was just epic. That was the most epic awesomeness ever. Yeah. I wish I, I wish I had his awesomeness and professionalism. But alas, I'm bad at creating content. I prefer live streams, to be honest, because I can just kind of do a thing. I don't have to worry about scripting or figuring stuff out or lighting or multiple audio tracks or editing after the fact. I can just sit down here, chill out, do a thing. I'm going to cut these a little short because they're a little bit long. Now we solder this on here. But before we solder this on here, I want to put a larger, uh, uh, what is it called, a uh, piece of heat shrink across all of it. So we'll do this one, and we'll get that ready, because then we'll just jacket the whole thing all at once. Right. So now we pre-tin this lead, just like this. I'm not sure if you guys can even really see what I'm doing here. I'm kind of doing this 
all side cam weird. Pretend that. And then this goes here. This is our positive voltage. This goes on there, and we just tack it together. Tack it together. Did I not solder that properly? Apparently, I did not pre tin that lead well enough. Let's do that again. Soak it with the solder. Just soak it all up in there. Just get all up in there. Lots of solder, please. To keep that the smoke away from my face, I just blow out. I just go while I'm doing it a little bit. Uh, so let's get this attached. This won't take much. Now, if this was a connection that was going to be vibrating a lot in a wire loom or something, you would actually like create hooked connections mm -hmm. and hook them around each other to make a good mechanical connection. But I'm not doing that. So we slip that over. Heat shrink is on there for that side. Keep this up. And you can just literally just use the side of your soldering iron to do that. Shrink that up. Like a champ. Now we do the negative side, which just connects directly together. But again, we want to put a piece of a uh, sh heat shrink on that. I had a tiny little piece here somewhere that had cut off from the other end that would have been perfect. The question is, is where did it go? It's on the bench somewhere. There it is. Perfect size. Perfect. A gentleman and a solderer. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Yeah, you're all going to VCF Midwest up in Chicagoland here in a couple of days. I think that's going to be really fun. I can't make it. I so wanted to go. I am unable to go, though. I have too much going on in work world to do that. But if you are going, a lot of people are going to be there. I believe Sean will be there. Tom Barber will be there. Adam McGowie will be there. Steve from Mac 84 will be there. Lots and lots and lots of people. Eric Helgeson of Blue Scuzzy will be there. Like all of the people. Ron from Ron's Computer Videos will be there. Like literally all my friends will be there. And I won't. It makes me sad. But alas, life is life. We do what we can. So that is done. So we heat shrink this bit. And again, the heat shrink is just, it helps make the mechanical connection a little bit better, but it also just protects the wires from shorting out. It's heat shrinked. Now we run the big chunk of heat shrink across both joints to create them as one joint. I'm going to twist these, these wires together a little bit just so they're a little more tidy. Heat shrink the entire joint together with heat shrink that is slightly too small for the job. There we go. If you didn't know this trick about using the side of your soldering iron to do your heat shrink, well, now you do. So, no, you don't need a hot air station or even a lighter, just your soldering iron. Not the tip of the iron, the side, the up, up the side. Retro Tech Chris, Garth Beagle, Jeremy's Retro Bar. Yes, thanks, Tom. Eric will be there. Mac Effects will be there. I will be there in spirit. Thank you very much for Tom Barber. Hi, Tom. He, I shipped him 900 stickers to give away. And they're a new design of sticker. So keep on the uh, lookout for those. He's just going to be randomly throwing them around places. You were watching Lady Ada. You were watching Lady Ada and now you're here. Hi, Francois. Lady Ada is an absolute, absolute demon of a tinkerer. She is the best on earth. If you all don't know who Lady Ada is, uh, Adafruit? Oh my gosh, 
there is someone in the background here. I don't know how long you've been waiting. Hi, Zodium. Um, hi. I have not been waiting very long. I just got done um, playing games with friends, and I was Yay! like, oh, hey, there's a StreamYard link. I should go see what he's up to. <laughs> I'm up to about five foot nine. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we're just getting to the point where now we're 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 getting it soldered together. So I've been kind of I've been lurking and looking over at your progress, and I was like, "Oh man, stop making me want a Mac Effects case." <laughs> Sorry, can't help you with that one. <laughs> so yeah, so now we get to actually put this in here. So what has been going on in your world, Sodium? I don't think I've heard from you in a little while. <laughs> um. Well, currently I'm getting uh, get, having fun getting um over getting boosted, but that's about it. Oh yeah, yeah, that. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Yep. It's like, oh, by the way, you have an immune system. Let me show you it. Uh, it's more like my immune system decides to overcompensate for so much stuff, and it's just like, yeah. Ah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm still upright, but I'm not sure how much longer. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't... Uh, in my experience, the booster, it doesn't last long. You'll be up and running by tomorrow. Yeah, usually after two days of feeling sick, you'll be all right. Yeah. Um, but I am working on things I can't exactly show you because very impromptu joining here, so I don't have anything set up. Yeah. But I've been working on a tie book. Has some on Twitter may have seen and uh, just kind of very kind of cringing every time I open the machine because I feel like the hinges are going to break. <laughs> what was it again you're working on? I didn't hear that part. A uh, tie book. What is tie book? Titanium, uh, titanium power book G4. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah, I'm not as uh, not as up on the terminology as the hip kids, so. <laughs> yeah, like... um. I was going to work on one that's in pretty bad shape, but we actually um, we went to a friend's where. Oh god, I got a bit of a cough going. <clears throat> but we were going to a friend's warehouse. Who this guy has a bunch of like stuff, and he has like a stack of titanium power books. And I was just like, "Hey, would you be opposed to getting rid of a couple of those?" And he was just like, "Sure, take them." Cool. I'm just now realizing that nobody can see a gosh darn thing I can, I'm doing, and they can just see my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to wait for this, because uh, I have to hold on to this joint until it solidifies, or else it's just going to go off in that nowhere, and then I'll change the camera angle here. But I've, yeah, I've done that a number of times. Those, those are cool. I think I might have one of those, maybe? I've maybe. done the whole shoulder thing, and I'm, well, not really shoulder thing, but because I'm using my phone as my camera, so to speak, I have to um, make sure I tell myself, hey, here's where the, basically I have things I set kind of off to the side to tell when I'm going out of frame because oh. I can't look at the phone while I'm shooting. Just stay with the spot. Yeah. yeah. So like the other time I was using one of Justin's business cards, like the indicator, hey, you go past this point, you're out of frame. Got one of those. I don't oh yeah, know. that's an aluminum oh, MacBook. MacBook. MacBook Pro. Got it. Okay. Oh, MacBook Pro. Yeah. This is broken. Very, very broken. I have. I I've been three. on the shelf for about ten years, doing nothing. <laughs> so. I have three of those, and none of them power up. Yeah. This one turns on, but it kernel panics after a while, and I think it just got bad RAM. Which, if it does, that's an easy fix, obviously. Tom says, let me in. Oh my gosh, not, 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 not Tom. Tom! Oh, hey, I'm on the internet. <laughs> not, not Tom. <laughs> That's the joke. He just Hi, keeps adding not. Every year he adds another not to his name. Yeah. <laughs> At some point, it's just going to go over the corner of the screen or off yeah. the edge of the screen. <laughs> oh, you, you know, don't tick, tempt me. We'll just, I'll just do it this way. Because I have the power. <laughs> <laughs> I 
That's the first one was not. Not, 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 not. So now I'm curious. Uh, let me try something. Like, stand by while I count those to make sure it's the right number of knots. How do I change my... Oh, there it is. Oh. Oh, that's, that's the cheating way of doing it. Also on the uh, uh, working max the characters, they actually you know they don't let you uh, put it off the edge of the screen. Also in the working on things department, I decided to shoot a completely impromptu video last night while I was still feeling all, well. I should say still feeling all right. I haven't been done up yet, but. Um, Yesterday, I decided on a whim. My friend was like, hey, I'm in the market for an Apple Pencil. Do you like them? And I was like, well, I've got mine that I never use. You want to just buy it from me? So sold that. Got a lavalier mic for my phone so I can actually, you know, shoot video and have it not sound like really crunchy. So I decided to just shoot an impromptu video last night just to test it out and I got to get that through the edit room and such, but I really love the the performance improvement. Cool. It sounds so much nicer. Joe, can I leak your sticker design? Sure. <laughs> you were going to anyway, so like, whatever. There's the new sticker design, so go to VCF and get my new sticker design, because this new sticker actually promotes me, instead of just being my random phrase. Ah, uh, yes, that's true. You're a jickum. <laughs> you know, so I'll let's... Them and then um, I'll leave some at Ron's table and I'll leave them at a... Uh, stick them on Ron's back while he's not looking. <laughs> <laughs> I should have... There's this old joke we had years ago at the shop. I've said this before on live streams, but there was a guy named Tim and he was on vacation. We took, a, we took a picture of him earlier in the year of him looking like, like I don't know. He kind of looked like, eh, like this, just like. We took a picture of him and we put a placard out and we we're like, blame this guy. He's not here, so he's in. He's in. Uh, he's he's responsible for all problems. <laughs> well, I should have made some stickers that said blame this guy, and you could just throw them on uh, Ron. That'd be funny. So for some reason, that reminded me. Years ago, at an old job, I printed out like a yeah you know, picture of myself just giving you know giving a peace sign or thumbs up or something, yeah. little yeah you know, little tiny picture, cut it out, and then taped it on to a random coworker's like family photo <laughs> in the background. And it took him like three weeks to notice, and he's like, "Wait a minute!" It's like, "What did you do?" Yeah, it's like, "Wait, you're not you're not my son." That was like, <laughs> there was also there was a mean relatively recently too of somebody who like they went around their family house for their to all their family pictures and replaced their picture with uh, Nick Cage. <laughs> glue. More glue. All of the glue. Glue. Wait. Glue. Wait. Glue. Wait. Don't talk to me on Mount Not Gates, Tom Barber. The links too has messed up schematics about them. Oh no. Somebody's building a blue scuzzy, I see. I'm building a bunch. If you want to get blue scuzzies, there's two good places to get them. One is jcm-1.com. Thank you. The other is if you're at VCF Midwest, I will have several blue scuzzies and blue scuzzy kits for sale. Yeah. I was trying to sell some friends on... Um, DB25. Some friends? What's wrong with you? Wait, you can buy friends. I'll take two. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I would say you've got two here right in front of you. Oh. Uh, <coughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Joe and uh, Eric's Edge, right? Yeah. What was that? Joe and Eric's Edge. You know, he's not. He's not. I joining. see how you feel. I see how. I see how it is. You know what? Zodium, the nice guy he is, he gave me a lovely 
Zodium is a nice guy. Macintosh SE logic board. I figured pass the love around because Joe did me a solid on my SC30 board. Yay! And then me being the nice guy I am gave uh, Justin a rusted out SC30 or a rusted out SC board and a um, just dead SC board. So, you know. Isn't he trying to make an SC reloaded? What was that? Wasn't he trying to... I can't remember. Wasn't he saying he was trying to ma- trying to make an SE reloaded? I'm not sure. I know he, he has a SE that he has. Um, ah, he can still always do that. He suspects it's the um, IWM chip is the issue. Oh no! Uh, but I have an. I've got a couple of SE boards. One was battery bombed, and then one wouldn't get past the um, mouse. Uh, like it would show the mouse cursor, but that's it. Mm. And I, I removed the. Um, I tried different ROM and uh, different IWM, you know, known good ones, same deal. And then I removed the uh, filter, the Boo Earns, whatever it is, the Burns filters. Boo Earns. I was saying Boo Earns. <laughs> um, That's spelled. <laughs> so I, re- I removed those, same deal. And then, yeah, Zodium offered his. Uh, his board, so I'm like, yeah, I'll just do that. Zodian's nice person. And then um, I gave Justin the ROM and IWM from your board, Zodium, hmm. along with my yeah my parts board. So hopefully, it will uh, live on in Justin's <laughs> SE. That reminds me of. Uh... Speaking of Justin's things, I wonder whatever became of that UCI that he sent off to uh, Jay. Still waiting on a chip, I think. Jay put the chip on backwards and it fried it. it, So they have to get a new chip just to see if that fixes it. Oh, that's fun. That that was beautiful. Like, (laughs) I just, that, I still want, right? We're like, no, (laughs) unfortunately, (laughs) these are different. Still waiting on Bruce to send the chip to Jay. It's fine. He'll get it. Okay. I still rewatch that stream because it just goes off the rails towards the middle and it's beautiful. Tangling is bad. You don't like that. Streams that just go completely off the rails are the best streams. Absolutely. Hold on, I'm going to light a fire. Yeah, like this stream. <laughs> I just remember I just remember Steve telling Jay to go fornicate himself, except he used the actual F bomb and it was beautiful. Yeah, please don't do that on my stream. Please don't do that. <laughs> Demonetized. So these, uh, unlike the uh, pumpkin tosh, I'm going to actually face downward into the case to make the case flat. I should I should I should say before anybody takes that out of context that what Steve said was in a friendly way, not like legitimate telling Jay to do things. It was friendly right. banter. And this was like short. Steven and Jay hate each other. What? My Don't favorite off the rail stream was um Steve was inventorying his like Mac Pros and G5s. Oh, no. And then I yeah watched the stream for like forty minutes or whatever. Then went to work I think, and I come back after like a full day. The stream is still happening, and Steve's trying to install Linux on his oh, I remember. <laughs> on the G five, and like he has like yeah I think it was either one or two guests on, and they're yeah they're trying so- to. Yeah, walking through that, it. Oh, that was epic. Yeah, I came home from work too and was like, Ooh, what's this? And I look at it and it's like, seven hours? What? It, yeah, it was, uh, I think Sean and someone else was on the stream and they were like walking. Uh, yep, that was that was epic. That was great. Walking Steve through like building from source and this and that. And it's like, well, this stream went off the rails, but in a good way. And they ended up getting it working if memory serves. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
I have to replace this wire here because it was, I measured it slightly too short and that's bad. Which means I get to solder with hot, hot implement near pretty plastic. So speaking of going off the rails, here we go. I was going to say before I just had to take a phone call that, 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 Stream that went off the rails of Steve's. No, it was I believe Action Retro was telling. Action Retro was the reason he was installing Linux because uh, you he encouraged it. him to do it. <laughs> yeah, and then they got in so deep that they didn't know what they were doing. So they brought in someone in the chat to help them out of the yeah. mess they got He's themselves like, into. Oh yeah, I'm I'm like a specialist in making Linux work on weird machines. Type this, do that, click this. Oh well, that was wrong. Um. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, I think it. Was, I think she was like a developer or something. Like, yeah. And then she's like, "There you go, it's working." Oh my gosh! Yep. Here we go. Here's where it goes off the rails. Soldering near plastic. Now, what you'll see is I put this PCB underneath that as underneath what I'm soldering as a bit of a heat shield. Makes a good insulator. I still need to do a chassis swap on my SE because uh, the top got melted somehow. I'm still to this day will never figure out why or how. I've got a fresh SE chassis. It just I really don't want to deal with uh, having to do that whole swap. Oh, it's the front chassis? No. Front chassis and back. The back would be obviously pretty easy. That is how 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 occur. How the melting or what what you're looking at? How it melted. Um, Garth has a theory that somebody had one of those banker lamps close to it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They overclocked it. <laughs> they have one of those fans that people always put on the tops of their Macs. But it had died a long time ago and wasn't blowing, and all it does was pack the heat, so it made it nice and stale. My brain is sticking to it. So, Joe, I'm going to open Blueberry Toss. I'm going to get my fingers like really greasy. I'm going to eat like a burger or something beforehand. And I'm going to touch the inside of the case. No. And then I'm going to close it up. No. And then I'm going to hide all of your <laughs> long torque screwdrivers. Inside it? Yes, inside it. Yeah, bring my own screwdriver. <laughs> Where, where's my mat cracker? Rattle. Rattle, rattle. <laughs> oh, <Mom! laughs> like, Alvin! Um, this wire came uh, desoldered the moment I took the sticky backing off the back of it. So I had to look it up, but one of the things I would be paranoid of changing out my SE case because my friend bought a Mac effects case. That's how I got a you know, relatively decent condition SE case. But when he was putting his Mac effects case on, he messages me. He's like, um, I think I really messed up. And I was like, what did you do? It's like, um, I broke a cable. Is this important? And takes a picture. The, the, he broke the anode cap. <laughs> no! Usually I was able to go over there and re-solder it all back together and it works. Yeah. I was like, okay, <laughs> this is stuff I really don't want to mess with because this type of voltage will very much enlighten your day. Yes. <laughs> oh, actually, Joe, while you're here. Yes. Um, I'll ask you the questions about the dangerous uh, boards. Unfortunately, it's tucked away, so I can't get it. But I picked up a, um, it was a Mac SE. Basically, it was destined to become a Macquarium. Yeah. So it was a SE, or not SE, sorry, a plus with a, um, yeah, just the shell, logic board, and analog board. The analog board, the um, wire for the anode was cut. Mm -hmm. Can I, like, get another anode somewhere and, like, splice yeah. the wires together? And you can. Um, the trick would be... Uh, the first layer of insulation. So yeah, if, if you can find an anode cap from anything, as long as it fits, it'll work. Um, 
time. That's not the worry. Um, it's you've got to carefully solder it together so that the uh, the angry pixies don't get out. Um, stand by, I'm doing something that's so slightly focus critical. There we go. Everyone um, sing to Joe. So <laughs> uh, the trick would be, yeah, you would have to find some way to insulate the solder joint that would you know that would insulate against about twenty thousand volts. Okay. So um, like really speaking, scotch tape. I don't know off the top of my head what that would be, but that's where I would start just because I happen to know that's about the voltage. Um okay. you would need some some sort of like celastic liquid tape or something to that effect. Um once that's done then you could put a couple different layers of um um uh, heat shrink on it just to solidify it a little bit better. And then that would probably be fine. Okay. The other option is I have a new old stock compact Mac um, flyback transformer. That's yeah, probably the safer way to go, out. right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. If I need the um, analog board in the future, I'm getting, um, I am getting a, the analog board itself works fine. It's just the flyback is cut. But I swapped the flyback from a different one to test it and it worked. Um, but I am getting a SE shell from with CRT from Jeremy, uh, Jeremy's Ultra Bar. So hopefully cool. <clears throat> I can then have another working plus. And if I keep saying SE, I mean plus. <laughs> I'm, I'm so used to my collection is like 90% Mac SEs for some reason. So I'm, I keep. Yeah, keep auto correcting my brain to SE. I need to watch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have a working Justin, plus name. Justin, I uh, Joe would well, Joe would have to do his best Kirk screams con impression, but it would be Tom. Con. <laughs> <laughs> That anybody would ever watch with me, the movie you do not want to watch with me is actually Star Trek Two. It is the best Star Trek movie. I will literally fight you about that. On top Star of Trek Three is better. Liar. Star Trek Two. Um, on top of all that, I have the whole script for the most part memorized, and I talk along with it, and it pisses people off. Like, but I can't enjoy the movie. I'm like, learn the script, fool. <laughs> That's me with Hackers and Fast and the Furious. Oh, Hackers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hack the Planet. I haven't seen that movie in like a billion years. I haven't seen the movie in like three weeks. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's been longer than that. It's been maybe six months. Yeah, I haven't seen Star Trek 2 in a long time. It's in theaters again. In select theaters, you can see it. Oh, we have. Oh, now we have all the opinions about Star Trek are coming out. Yeah, Star Trek Four is better for us. Humor. Yeah, Star Trek Four was very good. Um, now we only have one Star Trek opinion, and it's not relevant to this conversation. Um, you're about to say Star Trek sucks, and I'm about to kick you out of the chat, right? No, I'm about to say Ensign Kim deserved a promotion. Oh, totally. Captain Kim, man. Hey, you know what? Picard is still going. There's still a season of Picard. There's still time. There's still time. So I might I might have an opinion that's going to get, well, a fact that's going to get me kicked out of the chat. But I've never Joe. seen, I've never seen a Star Trek anything. Oh, sir. Sir. We need to correct that. Like, like when you stop by, like we're gonna have to watch Star Trek too. Freaking Star Trek! I mean, movie night at Joe's. My better half might kick you the hell out of my house before that, but we'll see. <laughs> Joe, why is this guy still here? I don't know this guy. I'm like, but mom, we're having fun. My my goal. My goal this trip is to not get kicked out of anyone's house. <laughs> uh, 
I was kind of like totally kind of off but on topic for this. I was like, part of me was kind of hoping there'd be like some like VCF get togethers after VCF West, but I think by the end of it, we were all so beat at that point, we all just wanted to go home. Yeah. Because we had to like, I don't know how it is for the other VCF events, but I know for West, it was like, um, if I remember correctly, the museum we were at was actually like, they had an event coming up after uh, the final day of West. So the organizer was like, yeah, um, we need to get out of here like within two hours. So yeah. it was a big rush to get everybody out. Yeah, I'm not sure if, I mean, I'm guessing, I'm guessing the uh, venue is going to be, yeah, still around. Yeah, it doesn't have anything booked for a Sunday afternoon, but I mean, lots of us are staying in the area or at the hotel itself. And then the next day, a couple of us are heading down to uh, like Ron's area. And then after that, I'm going to be driving through Ohio and going to stop by Joe's place and hopefully have gifts for him. Yay! Lots of printers. No, no printers. No, 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 no. I sent him a uh, a picture from work. We have we a while ago did a project and replaced like every printer in the company with um, managed printers through like central printing and all that stuff. And, but for some reason, they're like, "Oh, we need to keep some spare printers," and we kept like a third of the printers the old Xeroxes that are out of support and the old HPs that are out of support. So they just were piled up in the corner of the help desk area and had a picture of them before we actually did get rid of them. So I sent them to Joe and it's all like modern-ish, like HPs and Xeroxes. And it's like, hey, Joe, this is for you. I believe my response was um, either actually on O with no punctuation or a flipping the bird emoji. I don't remember it. <laughs> I think you said you have one already. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. And then, <laughs> you know, I've got an HP similar to those ones. I offered you so you could have, like, two in every room of the house and then, you know, three in each bathroom, but that didn't seem appealing to you for some reason. No. We're, 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 we are a green and paperless household. You even put a toilet paper. <laughs> that would be the perfect printer gift or printer hack is you would uh, replace somebody's toilet pol uh, paper roll with a zebra printer and it prints labels <laughs> off of a roll. <laughs> so, <laughs> toilet paper. <laughs> I just thought of a uh, like April Fool's like ad, ad type thing where it's like e ink toilet paper. <laughs> oh, dear. So if anyone no. wants to Photoshop together a uh, like an ad for that, uh, yeah, you can have that idea for free. Um, New see, here's Amazon. the problem. Here's the problem. There is f something funny that I'm sure I've shared before. Uh, let me see if I can find it. However, it's like. Technically, to say the company name, I have to curse. Okay. But, You're off the right. <laughs> but they're okay. I mean, they're a legitimate company. So um, there, there is a company called Shit Audio, and they actually make toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I will paste it in the chat if I can find the tab. Are you an admin? Will it go through? Yes. Yes. I'm a mod. I have unlimited power. There we go. That's all. Doesn't sound good when you flush. <laughs> I would hope so. Does it sound good when you flush? Oh, God. <laughs> I oh, love you. Greatest. The fun part is actually, they actually do make some pretty good audio products. I've had a couple. I'm going to tap down this power cable real quick. Speaking of harpsichord, I hear it being played right now. 
with great power comes great screw ups. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, I banned myself. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you banned yourself. Who remember <laughs> pastel toilet paper? Yes. Yes, remember when toilet paper used to be colored back in the 80s? Wait, neither no. of you were born yet. <laughs> no. I, I almost was born in the 80s. I'm March of 1990, so I'm oh. almost an 80s kid. I am an 80s kid, but just barely. Uh, August 1989. Oh, Jimmy. What's wrong with you people? You don't know. You missed the literally literal best decade ever. The 80s. No, the 90s were the best decade. No. Everybody I talk to says the 80s were the worst decade. Come on, the 90s, you had Michael Spindler as the CEO of Apple. You oh, had, no, um, no, no. Michael Spindler. Era, the era of the worst plastic. Michael Spindler was great at plastic. Live. Man. I mean, why was the 90s great? Apple almost died. Yeah, but that was the year that he got Windows 95. Dude, over the decade, he got Windows 95. Forever. Yeah, but you had um, you had BNL, the best Canadian alt rock band of the mid 90s. BNL. Bare naked ladies. Justin says he'll be forty-two next year, so clearly he knows the, the this the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Yep, I I turned forty-two this year. I'm old. Well, this was old one to do. Old man Joe. Uh, we're not far behind. <laughs> I am. So yeah, I'm just a I'm a baby. I'm the baby. I'm just a baby. <laughs> I still get carded. That's like the ultimate compliment. I still get carded. Whenever somebody's like, can I see your ID? I'm like, yes, yes. Yes, yeah, uh-huh. You may see. I, see, I always assumed like, you were slightly younger than me, Zodiac. I figured you were like thirty. I mean, you're not. You're not far. Yeah, because nah, you're what 32, 33? 33. 33. Just turned thirty-three. I don't feel like it though. When I'm thirty-three. I mean, okay, physically, I feel like sixty. Mentally, I still feel like I'm eighteen. There you go. Eric's got us all beat. Yeah, I'm sure he does. Eric I know Garth. I know Garth was saying he had just turned fifty, not that like not that long ago. When I'm sixty-four, cool down. My hands hurt. I'm hunting blue scuzzies. <laughs> you're, not supposed to be, you're supposed to be making them. Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting blue scuzzies. Yeah, this part make the blue scuzzies. Back, it's hardest to do. We got to get it all lined up and straight, and like my armpit is in the way, and you know, things. You know, that reminds me, I wonder, if, like, whenever, assuming that the Blueberry Tosh is going to go to, is, if it's not going to VCF this year, it's going to VCF at some point, yes? Uh, probably. I've got to get to VCF. I've been sequestered because of work reasons. I'm not allowed to get sick, basically. I'm not allowed to put myself in position, in, in, in like, like, conditions, basically, where I could get COVID. So I have uh, to be careful. But after the Omicron booster, um, hopefully, 
uh, crap will get under control. So even if I do get COVID, it'll be like, <coughs> and then I'll be back to work in two days. Like my my girlfriend got the got the second booster that was like really only meant for uh, older people and such. And when when COVID rolled through here through my house, she was completely asymptomatic, and I was like, "You lucky lucky person." Whereas I got really sick. Yeah, I'm triple boosted uh, with the original, uh, with the original right now, but. Um, I want to get the the new Omicron booster that came out uh, here, so then I'll be able to you know get back to actual life. Once that's once that's done and dusted, then I can actually start getting out into public I, and. I wish we had a time machine to go back to the fun days of a. Uh, <laughs> I, I I can't remember because time is time is a, a construct at the moment. But I want to say it was like April or so of 2021. I think that was the closest we ever came to being out of the pandemic. Yeah. Because oh, the yeah. numbers were just low. And it like felt like, yay, I can go out and do things now. And I don't have to worry about getting sick because everybody's vaxxed up and don't like numbers are just so ridiculously low. And then Delta came in like, oh, no. It was like yeah, for, a minute, for a minute there, it was like, I'm back, biatch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my like, cousin, uh, she had a wedding and it was supposed to be originally in 2020 that got you know, pushed back. So they pushed it back um, a year, figure just out of the blue, or you know, just randomly, like, well, I guess a year because same date, just you know, the next year. And that happened to be in that, you know, in that nice dip where it's like, hey, it's normal again. And then, like, three weeks later, it's like, nope. <sighs> so she got lucky, at least, where it's like, hey, we could have, yeah, she could have, like, a big, yeah, fairly big event. Yeah. All you can see is my back. Sorry. It was just like, it was, it was a nice time because it, like, felt like, hey, we're actually winning the war here. Then... COVID's like, uh-uh, no, you don't. No, uh -uh. And then what was kind of interesting is um, ended up having to travel a little bit for uh, family emergency things, and I managed to catch the dip between Delta and Omicron. So I like got that done, went out with some friends to on a trip to Arizona, got back, and literally, I think, a week later... Oh no, Omicron's wiping everybody. It's like, well. Either I've gotten it and was completely symptomatic, or I am the luckiest human on earth because, as far as I know, I have never gotten it. I got I it a couple of months ago after I went to a show, a concert, and I was totally expecting to get it. And I was fairly sick, you know, a couple of days later. I'm like, but I, you know, took multiple tests, they all came back negative. And it wasn't until um, the next day was work, and I was like, "Well, I need to take another test just to like." And I was feeling, you know, feeling better, mm -hmm. but I'm like, "Well, I need to take another test just so I'm not, you know, bringing it in if I am positive." And mm -hmm. sure enough, it came back positive, and it's like, "Well, I feel better, but hmm. I guess I'm working from home for the next yeah two weeks." Um, Eric, it oh, should be well, it should be available oh, now. Unquote. <laughs> I need to right. work, work from home, unquote. But yeah, if anybody out in the audience is like, man, I only get that Omicron booster when it's available. It should be already rolling out. Like, uh, I got mine through um, Safeway, and uh, they they already had them deployed, and they were already, like, well into giving them out. So, mm -hmm. but I, I managed to completely avoid COVID up until, like, earlier this year when I believe my girlfriend brought it home because she works with coworkers who are not very nice people. And by that, I mean, they were like, yeah, we want to catch COVID because it means we'll have to work from home. So they didn't really try to avoid getting it basically. And they, we have a complete and utter lack of understanding of the long-term effects after we get it. Even if I survive it. Ding. Yeah. So they brought it home. But, um, one of the fun things is, um, when VCF was happening, I fully expected to 
maybe get it at VCF. No, I didn't. I got a little bit of like con crud, but that was about it. Yeah. That was the thing about uh, Kansas Fest. Uh, Kansas Fest had pretty strong protocols, um, con considering that the, the venue did not let them impose their own protocols to some extent. Mm. Uh, and yeah, this goes, yeah, this goes like this. Um, you know, and uh, pe like people were masking voluntarily and you had to have, uh, you had to be asymptomatic before coming in and all of that stuff. And uh, Kansas Fest was 100% COVID free. Yep. Like from what I understand, um, I don't, they didn't at card us and by card, I mean, ask for like proof of vaccination yeah. or a negative test for the exhibitors at VCF West. But from what I was told, like the general public had to prove that they were good. Yeah. So it kind of, um, because I think their their kind of logic was exhibitors kind of know the way things go that you know we will we'll trust you guys to be good about it and thankfully yeah that's the way it went. I decided d despite everything I was like I'm just gonna go without a mask because it was during a hot day not as hot as it is right now of course but it was during a hot and stuffy day in the Bay Area and I was like. Yeah, wearing a mask while having a G4 MDD breathe fire on me just feels miserable. <laughs> so I'm gonna risk Ow, it. For right I'm now. Hot. Sorry. <laughs> just do a G. Do like a G5. Oh no. Dual, dual CPU, non-water cooled G5, and just yeah, sit behind that. Mmm, heater. The MDD puts out some serious heat, though. I don't think anybody brought a G5 to VCF. From what I understand, um, v at least for West, they were um, <clears throat> they were telling me, well, not they, but like some people I was talking to came by my booth. They were like, uh, yeah, like for West, for the most part, like. Once you start getting up into the 2000s, that's a bit new for this VCF. Yeah. And you can kind of tell because if you we went by consignment on the final day, and some people had brought, like, uh, late 90s, early 2000s Apple stuff to sell, none of it sold. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about here is I'm bringing, um, like, a Paramac G4, a blue and white G3, a couple of iMacs. Then some like PC towers, and I'm like, I hope these, you know, please I don't need money for them. I just want to get rid of them and get them, yeah, you know, get these duplicates out of my house, and yeah, you know, hopefully bring someone else, yeah, you know, some kind of, some kind of joy. So, worst case, if it starts to be, yeah, you know, a few hours left, I'm gonna just tape like a five dollar bill to each of them, and be like, <laughs> if you take the computer, you can get out of the five dollar bill. I, I'm kind of shocked. Okay, yeah, just so, <laughs> what kind of threw me for a loop is finding out that, like, because a lot of, from what I understand, some retro communities, they'll be, they, they're kind of, I don't want, I, this is a negative term, but I'm not trying to use it in a negative sense. They're kind of gatekeepers around their own communities because, um, they want, they want to be like that, at least a couple of the local ones over here. Because they'll give you they'll give you stuff for either really low prices or free that would normally be worth a ton of money on eBay. But the reason they don't proudly broadcast that is because you get people like Mr. Polka Dots who will come in, be like, yo, give me a good deal, and then they'll turn around and flip it for buku bucks on eBay. So it was kind of shocking once I kind of got more established in one of these communities. They're just like, yeah, IMAX to us ain't worth anything. Like we don't want them, so I got a like a free uh, snow iMac. Yeah, I know uh, someone. I think it's, I think it's Mister Macintosh on the forums and Twitter and stuff. He's giving away a um, a snow iMac, which is cool. I, lo I love the snow iMacs, but I'm trying to yeah reduce the number of iMacs I have because I, I love the iMacs, but like I don't have room for one of every color. As much as that pains me, that's kind of um why I decided to um because generally when I sell vintage tech I don't 
try to make a profit on it. I just like only sell it to make money for like the next project, so to yeah, speak. Exactly. And I actually got a free EMAC and I ended up selling it off to a friend of mine who, um, because I love the EMAC, don't get me wrong, but I don't have the room for it. And the iMac is more of a grail machine to me. So if I have to decide between the two of them, I'd rather keep the iMac. Yeah, I sold it for like 40 bucks. I'm just saying, I just said, yeah, I don't, I just really want to make a little bit of money to get ahead on bills. That's all I really want at this point in time. Yeah, but I, I don't want to make like gross profit on things because that's just, uh, I don't like people who do that. I'm kind of the same way. I have this thing, like, I, I don't go hunting for massive amounts of computers. Um, they just kind of fall in my lap. And if, even if I spend money on them, um, I tend to either just give them away or or I will give, or I'll, it'd be like shipping, get, cost of shipping, or it'll be like $10 or something like that because I'm not looking to, to make money off the machines. I'm looking to get the machines into hands of people that are going to love them and take care of them. Yeah, like... In, um, like in my case, um, <laughs> you know, you know, like for the most part, um, that's what I, I tend to do. And usually like, I'll just like with Tom for that board, I just said, Hey, you can have this for the price of shipping. That's all I care about. Yeah. Generally, the only time I'll ever try to sell a machine for close to like what people are actually selling them for is if I'm backed up against the corner and I seriously need to make some money. <laughs> Like, the one time back in early 2020, actually, I tried to give the guy a good deal for it because I gave him a one of my Quadra 700s with an AEK on top of it. And I just said, just give me 100 bucks for it. Because what happened is my I was trying to repair my girlfriend's phone, and it went horribly sideways. I need to buy her a new one. So I need to make some money. And I said... This is what I have. All I want is a hundred bucks for it, which is way less than what eBay wants for it. I meet up with a guy who was a Netflix employee, I might add, Ooh. and he's just like, he hands me two hundred dollars. I was like, I don't need two hundred dollars for this. He's like, no, take it, just take it. Like, I've seen what this machine is worth on eBay. Just take it. Like, <laughs> I was oh, like, how nice. I was just like, okay. In any other situation, I would insist because it's it's a community favor. But right now, I I need the money, so I will graciously take it. <laughs> How nice! So, yeah, go ahead. I remember there was a um, story that was going around about like group. Uh, I don't know if it's like a SGI or something, but it's like. It was just like meant to be passed, like a you know, passed among collectors of this, you know, certain type of machine. Oh, and it was, it was free, and you know, there's there's like a label like in it and under it and everything that says like, if you paid money for this machine, yeah, go back to where you got it, beat the guy up, <laughs> and then take your money back because it's That's just a, it's meant to be a machine that yeah you know, just goes you know from collector to collector. Yeah, you know, they mess around with it and then they you know. Passed on to the next, yeah, the next person. I think that's the Sacramento guys because they have they have what they call the Village Indie. Yeah, that. Yeah, the Village yeah. Indie. Yeah, that's that that's uh, the um, community I'm in, and yeah, they have um, the Village Indie, which was given <laughs> by one of the one of the um, I believe their name is Lucanus on uh, Twitter, but um, they, um, they go by Nick. Uh, also, but basically, guy has a ton of SGI things. One of the things they got, uh, they passed on was an indie that goes among the group. And I remember actually one of the possessor possessors of the indie uh, was like, "Yo, is it okay if I pass this on?" And the stipulation was, "You you accept no money for this." And I was like. The only time in that case I would say money can trade hands is if like, hey, can you drive that to me or can you ship that to me? Because 
gas be expensive right now. <laughs> But no, no profit and such is to be made on that machine, and I think that's actually kind of cool. Yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, like the label on the bottom, I believe, says, "Yeah, go punch." If you paid for this, go punch last person you got it in the groin and get your money back. <laughs> wow. Are we ready to assemble this? I think we are. Yes. This is where it'll either work or it'll catch fire. And speaking of indies, uh, Macintosh Librarian got, I mean, it's the next station, or some next computers, but I think she got a, uh, was it an indie? Uh, she got an, she got two Octanes, one of them is a parts machine, and the other is a... Oh yeah, the indie is, the indie is the, like, desktop style one, right? The purple? Yeah, it's like the flat one, the, um, the purple one is, I believe, the Indigo, or the Challenge, I can't remember which... Okay, and then the other one is the um, it's like a teal, but it's the desktop style. Yeah, the well, the the indigo and the uh, the indigo challenge and indie used very similar case styles. Here we go. So this is tricky because you have to get this stuff here clear of this. So that's important. Also, I need to add something to this case before I do it, so we can actually plug the power in. I didn't mean to interrupt the conversation. Oh, no. No worries. It's my yeah, it's not, I'll do what I, I want. No, you I have to ask you also got, Oh, go ahead. You have to ask permission to interrupt. Even though <laughs> it is. I have permission. <laughs> permission to interrupt. Okay. There you go. And there you go. I am now interrupting. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't approve of that, Joe. This is my channel now. <laughs> well, that's right. You senior, know. senior name is gonna have to be jo not Joe S. <laughs> Joe S. I like oh, when a uh, retro S. techie S. joins uh, joins people's streams, and he yeah he names himself like Mac eighty four or you know Garth or yeah whatever. Retro techie. Yeah. Yeah. Barth Geagle. Barth yeah, Barth Geagle. <laughs> I'm very close to a non-discharged CRT, so wish me luck. Don't I thought those had, uh, I thought those had like, um, whatever the component is called that self-discharges them. Uh, the, the bleeder yeah. resistor. Yeah, yeah. It probably does, but you know. You never want to trust it, though. I forgot to plug the power connector in, so. And then I have this for an internal blue SCSI if I want to put it in. Dumb question, is that an SE or SE30? This uh, board is an SE. Okay. Yeah, I only have one SE30 board, and it's in the pumpkin pot. Okay. So if point. anybody wants to build their own pumpkin tosh, I'm going to be selling at VCF Midwest a uh, one of those IBM 5155 5155, uh, tubes. Yeah. The same one that Joe used, because I bought it, and then I went to Computer Reset and got, like, three of them for... Much Keep less than expect on eBay. Like, go over here. Go all the way the heck over here so you can see what I'm doing. This plugs into this. And that is just long enough to allow this to do that. And not get stuck on the frame, please. This is reminding me I should probably find my trap. Well, I, I keep saying I need to find a 1.4 meg drive for my SE30. I think I have one somewhere. <clears throat> but unfortunately, the, the eject gear is, I think, trashed. If you need any eject gears, um, yeah, let me know and I'll send you some. You can also I will have to take you up on that. I need to take it apart to see if that's truly what went on it. That is in the way. I think I remember I could put a disc into it, but the disc will not come back out of it, so... Oh, yeah, so that's probably the eject gear. There's, um, there's a few good videos about just you know, refurbishing those drives. Um, I know Adrian has one. There's a, uh, a local guy, or he was locally moved, um, CT Mac Man on YouTube, and he has a video, and then I think... Uh, I think there's a few others. 
but yeah, there's enough, there's definitely enough resources out there about how to, you know, clean those drives up. And yeah, if you need a, if you need a gear, I've got some spare ones. Oh yeah, Mac Effects, it's uh, brand new, so I'll, um, I just basically want, you know, what I got, what I paid for it on eBay, mm. but we'll talk at the show. You can see my planning list. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. That's not so yes. like up there. That's fine. It's still a, uh, yeah, in the fact, yeah, the factory cardboard or whatever. I bought it from the same, the same guy that uh, Joe got his from, and then I ended up coming across some other ones, like, a month later. Yeah, I just need to determine if that's truly what's going on. If so, I'll probably take you up on it. This, this, this always... Make sure yeah, the drive yeah. actually works because it could be that, like, even if the eject, even if the eject is fixed, it's like, oh no, your heads are trashed. <laughs> yeah, hopefully that's not the case. And if you do end needing a drive, um, I'm sure I can dig something up or yeah. Steve or someone. I've been asking around, and everybody's like, "Yeah, those drives are getting kind of hard to find." So, I bought um, a while ago. I bought from a local guy, the same guy, uh, CT Magman um, on YouTube. Uh, I bought like three or four refurbished drives from him. So, in theory, I've got three or four. Unrefurbished drives. Yeah, thankfully, like a lot of the drives I've come in contact with have been um have been ones that basically all they need is just a clean out and a lube up, and that they're good. But then, if, then I've got this one here that I think decide nope, I don't need an eject motor. Screw you or eject gear. But um. This case is being silly. <laughs> I just, I, I, I've, I've got something like crooked or cattywampus somewhere. I've been tempted to go the Draga one route and like put one of the more modern floppy drives into my SE30 because I've got a few of those hanging around. But then I looked at the video he did and it's like, okay, that's a like I'm not above going jank for stuff like this, but that's a little too jank. Well, those are. Um... Because the later ones are the manual inject ones, right? Yeah. So you have to so like you have to, you like have to push them in really hard to get them to work. Yeah, I think you'd have to. Um, I mean, you could, I guess, cut a. That's not interfering. Cut like you know a slot, like finger. Yeah. None of yeah. that. Around or whatever, but that's not going to look good. No, it's not going to like. The only way, like the the. The closest you could hope to get is something like Action Retro's SE30 that, like, the CD slot got cut into it. Like, it looked really, really actually professional to some extent. I think the... I think I don't have the lot, the analog board in all the way. That's fine. I'm not going to worry about it right now. We'll fix that later. But, uh, we'll fix it in post. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like... I thought about cutting a little bit of a little bit out of the case because that would be I would be doing that to the melted case, which is ruined anyway. So no real big loss there. But yeah, that's kind of still it's a little too jank for what I want to do with it. And so I decided, you know what? No, I'm gonna just wait till I find a legit floppy for it. So I'm sure they're out there. I just have to keep it ears to the ground and such. Yeah, and from what I remember, the floppy drives are usually pretty, yeah, pretty reliable as long as you. Uh, case won't go together. Sorry. It's okay. Something here in the front, down here. Arr! My anger level is very high at the moment. Thank you for entertaining my guests, uh, guys, or all my, or all my watchers while I'm like fussing around with hardware. I appreciate it. You're welcome. What in the heck is in the way? The um, yeah. From what I remember, the floppy drives are pretty reliable. The big, I mean, the big thing is when you clean the heads, be very careful because you, if you lift them up too much, you can ruin the yeah. Don't mess with spring. The I just lift them just high enough to get like a um, a Q tip in between the two. 
and go and no more. Yeah, one of them I was refurbishing and I made the mistake of I just was not paying attention at all. And as soon as like I lifted it, like as I was lifting it, I'm like, wait a minute. And it was too late. I have uh, once and only once successfully screwed up the heads on a one point four two. It looks like it's a one point four meg drive that I need because I hear the eight hundred K ones are even harder to find. That's in all the way. Could you put a assuming it's like the same you know auto inject, could you put a one point four meg drive? In an 800k machine, and it will still just work as 800k. I would imagine it should, but the um, I can directly confirm that cool. okay, because my SP, um, uh, which is actually this board right here, um, until I got the parts to fix it, was a SE and an SE FDHD case. With a with a 1.4 meg floppy drive, but it was plugged into this board, which had the 800k swim and 800k ROMs. It worked like an 800k. Interesting. So, yep, it worked perfectly fine, and I was able to just simply replace that that uh, sucker and it worked. I replaced the I replaced the the ROMs and the swim and I was like okay, and it worked fine after that. Uh, Joe, Mac Effects has pointed something out in the chat. Uh, Mac Effects is sometimes they don't light up with the hole on the front bezel, the knob. Yes, it very well could be because this board came or this analog board came without a knob, and I 3D printed one. So it's possible. We have attracted the Drake. Hot Drake. It turns. Drake. I love your RAM. It's working great. It's beautiful. It's amazing. Drake, join the stream. It seems to be in there okay. The analog board seems to be all the way into the chat, so there's not an interference, and it hurts. So I don't think <clears> that... <throat> yeah, that's not... Yeah, unfortunately, that's not what that is, but thank you for the tip. I do appreciate that. Thank you for pointing that out. Smelling great. <laughs> right! Drake has smell vision. You want to try that? You can if you like. Uh, you know, now the Drake's here. That reminds me. Um, what is this LED you threw in with the RAM kit? Is that oh, supposed to be? Uh, forgot a uh, bezel bulb or whatever. Yeah, that. So it is. It's cool. It's a um combination. So it's a two color LED. So you can um, hook it up to your blue SCSI and have one be the, you know, one power and one activity light mm. and one LED. So what I've seen it uh, put into is like the color classic where it just has a power light normally. So you could have, you know, green for power and then it will flash red when there's disk activity. So I, um, mm. I got Drake. And then it's something that uh, the sat Satanic Mac Club does. Him and K. Koba. And I think I'm, there's someone else. Steven, I think, is in the Satanic Mac Club. Tech I am there at some point. Like, I decided to stop while I was ahead with the RAM. I really should put the LEDs on the RAM at some point. But I decided to stop while I was ahead because it was really fighting me. Oh, yeah. I, the... Uh, Go ahead. I got, I got um, one of the VRAM kits from Drake, and then uh, Steve did also, and a few of us did like soldering, yeah, soldering party. Um, I think Joe, did you? Were you in that? Were you in that party? Yep. And um, I didn't have luck with mine. It was showing like weird lines on half the color classic screen, so I figured it was like, oh, it's you know, I messed up. Yeah, I messed up a pin somewhere, or whatever. Second one, same thing. And Drake's like, yeah, you probably messed up a pin. Yeah, I'll go through each pin and just double check it. And then Steve had the same issue with his color classic. And Drake's like, well, Steve knows what he's doing, so it <laughs> might actually be an issue with the you know with the board. So he you know checks in his Drake checks one in his color classic. 
I guess because it's a 512K uh, VRAM SIM, but the Color Classic will only support a 256K VRAM SIM, it will just like show weird lines on like the bottom half of the screen. <laughs> and then to confirm it, I tried a stock Apple like from my LC, a 512K VRAM SIM in my Color Classic, and yep, sure enough, to did the same thing, so... If at first you don't succeed, just put the screws into it and wedge the thing together. When in doubt, force it and hope it doesn't explode. <laughs> I know what happened when I tried to assemble my RAM kit. I know I was talking to Drake about it. And he was like, yeah, you might want to put some solder on like the, the fingers of the module. Because the PCBs are a little thin. And... I tried that and it did the it didn't want to fit my SE or my SE30. So I was like, huh, interesting. Wicked it all back up and then it actually fit and worked. I was like, okay then. So I picked up um the Garrett before oh, a bunch of other people started making the you know the Ram Sim or the Ram Sims. I picked up the um Garrett's workshop uh Ram Sims. And it was the same same deal. Like it was just very, uh, you know, because the board, you know, the RAM slots in the board get loose over time from upgrades and stuff. And you know, the PCBs are slightly thinner than what the original PCBs were. Yeah. And, um, the factory defect. Thank you, uh, Zane is the guy's name. He helped me out a bit, and he, he ended up sending me a different, yeah, you know, different batch and some like stickers that. Uh, kind of thickened it up and helped. So it helped a bit, but it was still not great. But I ended up just replacing on a, one of Dave's streams. I replaced every RAM socket on my SC30 board. So eight sockets, 30 pins each. That was a pain. I would like to, at some point, replace the ROM SIM socket on mine. Because yeah, it's currently but, being held in with uh, potato fries clips that Joe so helpfully printed. Mm -hmm. It has to be. Yeah, the one trick I would say if you're going to replace those sockets, and I don't know if this is the right way to do it, but I, I basically I just okay. ripped apart like the socket. I just basically broke off, like oh, broke apart all the plastic with pro with uh, pliers. And then I was able to just desolder each of the pins individually. Oh, that sounds painful. So all it was was, and I'm actually, uh, I can demonstrate because of my project bench is a Mac Classic uh, RAM card. So I broke off like all the plastic tabs or the plastic parts. So now I just have to desolder each of the individual pins. But that way you don't have to get the, each one perfect before mm -hmm. you throw yeah. the whole thing. You can yeah do it one at a time. Yep. So, mm -hmm. and the yep, only yep, the yep, only yep. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. the only pad I messed up, or the only yeah the pad I messed up on the SD board was one where I didn't do that method, where I had like every pin you know desoldered except for one, which is slightly desoldered but enough that it was yeah grasping onto a pad. So I lifted a pad with that, so I had to bodge that one, but. All right, yeah. we're ready. Three out of ten, don't recommend. Three? <laughs> Unless you need to. Two. One. one. Explosions. Boom. I did something wrong. I don't think I plugged the lights in. <laughs> Stand by. <laughs> yeah, I did want to show, I believe this case is a factory defect. Which sucks because I've done all the work to put it together, but whatever. So, if you look here, it's like properly together here, right? But it doesn't fit. And then when you, it's like all lined up properly down the front. No problems there. But if you come up here, it is literally cattywampus. It's like wrong. Ooh. And it just adds more character. I believe it's actually the front part. Because if you look, you've got you got the a couple little like 
goo points on the corners here. Like it came out of the mold, like it was slightly still, like it was a little bit too warm. And so this part warped. So I think it's actually the front part that's the failure. Do you want me to beat up Mac effects for you? Yeah. Yeah, and it's got here, it's got another point down here. So I think that this is wrong. And if I'm very careful with the heat gun, I might be able to get that stretched back out, but we'll see. We'll see. Man, at some point, I hope to have enough disposable income to get a Mac effects case, because after seeing my friends, I'm just like, oh, this looks sick. I want one. <laughs> yeah, I got one of the, uh, just the original clear ones. And I, I picked up the, um, he was selling off the, uh, I've, like the first revision or whatever you call them, where it's like they're slightly hazier than you know, they're not perfectly clear before yeah. they got the um, manufacturing process, you know, fully down. But it looks great. And, um, it's just cool to see. Yeah, cool to see the inside of the machine without having to, without having to spend prototype money. But I, mean, I haven't seen any of the Mac effects. Uh, cases yeah, you know, the, the uh, colored ones i haven't seen those in real life so i'm excited to see those at vcf and yeah see what the colors actually look like it's it's quite yeah it's hard to explain it's yeah because it's like i know certain colors just like you could see videos and pictures of them but it doesn't yeah. do it justice so if I put this corner in, like, I cannot fit this entire corner. Well, as, as I've mentioned a few times, I would take a bullet for Mac effects because, like, of what they, like, because, so the story goes, my friend was actually looking to buy a case from them, and I believe he was actually going for the blue one, if I remember correctly. I could, I could be wrong, but just basically was out of stock when he ordered it. So he emailed Mark, and Mark was like, well, yeah, we don't have that one, but um, there, there's something going on. And Mark was basically like, I can sell you our... We have one more limited edition case left, and we'll gladly sell it to you for the price of a regular one. So, yeah, did real good by my friend. So, like, if I ever have enough money to buy a Mac effects case, you bet, you bet that's where my money is going. <laughs> yeah, that's... um. Ryan, right? Yeah, Ryan. Yeah, because he was, I think, who I follow him on Twitter and YouTube, and I saw the um, I saw his, the limited edition case, you know, show up there, and like, oh, that's so cool! I want one, and went online, and sure enough, they were yeah you know, sold out, and that that then explains it. If by the time he got it, you know, <laughs> he, if he got the last one. But yeah, those things, those things are cool. It's glow in the dark, apparently, too. Yeah. And then I, li I like uh, Adam. He has the um, Hulkintosh, so the green case with the uh, yeah, that just green does case with the green CRT and the green mouse, and I think he has a yeah. green keyboard. It was actually, now that I think of it, it was actually pretty fun because uh, at VCF West, we replaced, uh, me and Ryan were placed up next to uh, Elemento's table, and he had a green SE on his table. So it's like we had the green SE right next to the limited edition glow in the dark SE. So it was like two of them side by side. Pretty cool. So if we're shouting out, you know, people that do cool stuff, let's shout out Elemento. Because he yeah, had, um, badass. Yes. he ordered, he found like a screw manufacturer and got screws made in the original specifications you mean of these? the Compact Mac. You mean those screws. right there that I'm using? Yes. They came from Elemental? Yes. So some of these are Elemental screws. Some of these are original screws. And I can kind of tell which is which, but that's just purely like his or shinier. Yeah. But they work, they work fantastic. And I mean... For a while, the only place you can get them was eBay, and it was like now the machine. It was like twenty bucks for like a set. I forgot what he yeah you know, we he charged, but it's definitely yeah. And he sells like uh you know ten packs or whatever it was. I think it is. So I bought a bunch from him and never have to worry about compact max screws again. Oh, he's he is quite the badass because uh he is solid too because um. 
because we were we were placed up right next to his table. Um, when I got my SE30 board, he um, his, because it was actually not just him. He had like a whole team there, and one of his guys was like, "Hey, do you want us to take a look at that SE30 board for you? Like, we'll you know do it for free, basically." And I mean, basically just give it a once over, not like truly like look deep at it, because it was a little bit kind of um. The SC30 board was a little bit off when I first got it. So basically, they went over it once, uh, replaced a missing capacitor, and ultrasonic it for me for free. Very oh, nice of them. I got it together. Yay. Apparently, it was my fault somehow. I'll take that. <laughs> now we can test it. Do you want me to turn all the lights off? Oh, that looks good. Awesome. That is slick as snot, I'll tell you what. A little bit of noise here, but that's because this tube is using a yoke that wasn't designed for it. But we'll deal. I'm going to send this to my friend, and he is probably going <clears throat> he is probably going to be like, how do I make one of these? I want to spend money to make one of these. Now, Joe, I remember you, you were mentioning you were going to try like a film, like um, yeah. yells over the screen to see I if that... Take the machine back apart. <laughs> I I have to put that on the tube. Okay. Well, I assumed you tried it already, but you didn't. No, I haven't. You I could have like so we can like take a quick look see and see if it yeah, makes just sense. Try to put it over and then just see how it looks. It's hard to difficult to it doesn't really make it any bluer, to be honest. Okay. What if you do two layers? And three layers. And, and four three layers. layers. And twenty seven layers. Yeah, it doesn't really change it that much. Okay. So I'm probably just gonna leave it alone. Well, technically, that screen is the very faint blue. Yes. That's what a lot of people were saying. What I was looking for is there are some tubes that you can get that have a very special kind of this film on it from the factory that are true deep blue uh, screens. I, I, I think Drake actually sent me a link to one. Um, but the problem is, is they're all like 12-inch tubes. They won't fit. Right? So... This is, it's got to be nine. So, but yeah, now it is dark here. I'm wondering if I can uh, maybe get away with putting an LED in here, but backwards, flip backwards so the front will glow. Because this up here is nice because these LEDs are backwards and they're shooting down into the floor, right? I don't know. Thoughts for future, Joe. But I think that is. Wiggly, wiggly. People want to see the Big Mac. They want to make the Mac big. Okay. Um, I I don't think I because I was kind of lurking at the time. Did you use uh? Are you using blue LEDs in there? Or are you using just white LEDs and letting the case do the job? They are blue LEDs. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Stop making me want a Mac effects case. Ha. Ah. Uh no. <laughs> That screen gets really, really bright. Also, if ever, ever Mac Effect starts making stuff for the 9600, that is the day I go fully broke. <laughs> Just to have a transparent case for that thing. Oh my goodness. Hey, Mac Effects, you got your next product. <laughs> Mac Effects, I need a 6100 case. Ignore the fact it's going to cost like 100000 for the tooling, I'm sure. <laughs> You're stuck in the film. Okay. Yeah, All right. BRB, got to get more blue pills. That's a deep dad. Different type of blue pill. Well, I'll have to take it apart anyway because I forgot to put the speaker in it. Oh, no. Oh, I have more 
when I'm done, this needs to go on it. That's the, uh, the whatever it is. What is that thing? Yeah, the programmer, the programmer switch. But yeah. Sweaty. It's boo. It's all boo. Next, you need a. Uh, you need the green one. Yeah. <laughs> I need the red one, which you can't get anymore. <laughs> you also have this, the shell for the mouse. Oh, nice. You can trick that out and put LEDs in that too, because it's clear. That'd be nice. The official, yeah, like the official Mac of blue SCSI right here. <laughs> you know, okay, so there was some news in another Discord channel I'm not going to mention, but it did remind me. I wonder what would happen to blue SCSI if you were to make an RP2040 based blue SCSI, like what it would do for performance. Uh, you might be surprised that in the current iteration, it probably wouldn't be that much better. And the only reason is there is one last thing for the challenge that the blue schedule you have to overcome that has nothing to do with the performance of the blue pill. Mm. It has to do with the way the SCSI protocol is implemented and a certain subtask that is an absolute pain in the butt to wrap your head. Got it. It's that I don't know how you can put it in the. In the ASIC uh, versions or the ASIC uh, blues or ASIC SCSI systems, it's a little bit easier to do because you can do, handle it with a state machine uh, because it has very, how can I say, very tight and specific timing requirements. Um, when you're using a pro, uh, system that uses a program instead, it's hard to do that because you're, I don't know how you can put it, you have to very carefully manage the timing with interrupts and this and that and the other and count cycles and all of this other stuff to make sure it's, yeah, I'll just put it that way. So the, um, the Zulu SCSI, I know, I know Zodium has been doing a bunch of benchmarking on that because that's using in the current iteration, it's using a, uh, I think an ST type. <laughs> <trip>. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know if Eric is watching the stream or if he's like, if he um, it ha just felt a like a disturbance in the force, but he just like messaged me saying he saw the same thing. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. He yeah. He sent uh, something to a chat that I'm in. Oh yeah. <laughs> Problem solved. What's up, but with um interesting. Okay. So the Zulu SCSI, the current one that uses the um I don't have one in front of me, but it uses like a ST clone, I believe, right? Um it, I know it's like just like I don't know what it is, like what what specifically it's trying to emulate or be like. I do know it's a giga device thing because I was actually trying to um, roll through the the motions of recovering because I thought I bricked my my uh, Zulu SCSI when I was testing the ninety six hundred fixes. And I remember having to install like the, the the dev tools and stuff to potentially bring it back with DFU, but thankfully that was not the case. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> Trying to see if you can like make <laughs> but yeah, like the reason why I, I bring up the RP2040 is because I know Justin's been playing around with trying to make a blue SCSI based device on like another SOC for, for potentially for performance gains. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I, I I'm kind of invested in this because I really want to see the blue SCSI like go kind of break the speed barrier a little bit because as, as of right now i believe the best you can get is two megabytes a second on the uh the f4 
And the current the F ones are capped at like one point two, if I remember correctly. Yeah, in the um earlier, maybe like a year or two ago, very early in the blue scuzzy days, um someone forked it and was working on making a uh art yeah uh, Raspberry um the tw- was it twenty forty you said? Whatever yeah, the RP twenty forty. Yeah, the Pi Pico is on. Um, but I don't know if that project ever got anywhere if he just like started like yeah, renaming, yeah. Changing like the pin, yeah, the pin mappings or whatever in the code. But yeah, if Justin or someone is able to yeah fork blue scuzzy to um to that, that would be cool to see. If anything, just because you know those tips are, you know, fairly easily available. Which at least the um these ST uh these blue pills are much easier to get now than they were even like a year ago. Even though knock on or, or yeah. Ironically shortly after I started thinking that way, I got a whole yeah. batch of weird ones. Eric uh, apparently Mr. Helgeson's ears were burning because he just posted a thing, uh Tom. Wait, what? Uh, Just look at look at the the special Discord place, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Oh, that's oh, that's cool. Yeah, I know, right? Anyway, <laughs> he's like Joe's ta- Joe and and Tom and Xodium are talking about a thing. Let me show you thing. Shh, I didn't say that. I feel. Out I feel. Gone. How much money do I have to bribe someone to get? Never mind. I I don't want to know. <laughs> I'm kind awesome. of like I, I kind of want to I kind of want to just say like I I is when I I I know I talk about Zulu and such really I'm just kind of like I know like I've been meaning to say something but I don't know how to really say it but I, I really am trying to kind of stay above any kind of community drama because I'm just in, I'm just invested in this stuff because I want to see number go up. Yeah, I mean. Obviously, I have an interest in, you know, Blue Scuzzy doing well, and I like, I mean, just as a product, I like the Blue Scuzzy a lot, but, I mean, I think you said it well in a previous tweet, use whatever works for you. Right. Yeah, because, like, I was actually, I've actually met Alex in person, and I basically, like, I just said at this point, I, like... What Alex says in person, what he says online, it can be two completely different things. But I just was straight up like, listen, the way I see th- the market, like, I s- Blue Scuzzy and Zulu Scuzzy really do not directly compete so much because Blue Scuzzy is like an awesome product when you're not, when you don't, when you're using it in a Mac that doesn't need speed. And a lot of people don't need the speed of a Zulu Scuzzy. So a Blue Scuzzy. It's perfectly fine. And there's a lot of people like me who can't even afford a Zulu Scuzzy because they're too uh, at the top of the market. So Blue Scuzzy is going to enjoy a lot of success because it enables people like me to affordably get their Macs running again. And there's a very narrow sliver of Macs where a Zulu Scuzzy would be more beneficial than a Blue Scuzzy because you look at the top end of the Power Macs it's like you might as well just buy a SATA card. So that's that's that transitionary period too, where they started to move to IDE anyway, and then say so yeah, an industrial flash card or something. So like the so, narrow sliver is like the the new bus power max, and arguably with those, the the everything is so slow on those, you could go either way with a blue scuzzy or a Zulu scuzzy, or you know land somewhere in the middle and go with an F four blue scuzzy, and it's still cheaper. Mm-hmm. So it's like there's a very narrow slice, and I think like both products can coexist in the same space without the without any kind of drama, and it just kind of I don't know. I'm kind of at this point just tired of the drama. But I say this as somebody who has no idea what went on before I came into the scene, which was kind of after Tinker Different started up and such. So. 
my eyes are kind of the eyes of a a relative greenhorn here because I know 68 KMLA can be a little bit caustic and I personally have never experienced it. So yeah. And I mean, I don't want to get you know, too into it, but as someone that witnessed, you know, lots of the stuff going down, I think, yeah, there's definitely, yeah. Some of the drama was definitely was, you know, put in quotes drama was definitely justified, especially with the, um, the whole 68K Tinker Different fiasco. Um, but yeah, there's, yeah. Some things about 68K that are not, yeah, not great, we'll say. It's one of those things where I really would like to sit down with people at some point and get like caught up to speed and like, hey, why, like, why is everything the way it is? And like, just don't, I don't not in the interest of like perpetuating drama. I just like it'll help me like it would help me learn like okay this is why people feel the way they do about what they do and kind of rather than being dismissive of the drama and so, or dismissive of people's feelings because I I don't know what's going on and I haven't known what's going on. I just the only thing like for scuzzy drama the only thing I really. The only way I can do it is when there was that outburst way back at the beginning of the year, I think. <laughs> that was really it. But that, hey, it gave me a great quote. Somebody like replied to Joe and said, are people acting scuzzy again? <laughs> <laughs> I blame Joe for the drama. Oh, you can blame me for whatever you want. No, he said... 8 bits are all you need, and like, no, sometimes you need 16 bits, and he's like, no, you never need 16 bits, only 8 bits. I'm like, well, what about 32 bits? And he's like, don't get me started on 32 bits. Tom, that, how yeah. dare you? That's where it all... When, you know, whenever you need more than 8 bits, you just do multiple 8-bit processing. Really multiple bits. Just cluster your Apple IIs. <laughs> Jeremy's bit to chat, uh, Hillbilly Shack asked a, a question completely unrelated to anything we're talking about. Has your universal Apple RGB adapter been tested specifically with an IBM PC junior monitor? And the answer to that question would be no. Because I don't have a monitor against which to test that. I don't have a PC junior monitor. Now, if that's basically so, an EGA CGA, I have EGAs and CGAs and have tested it against those. I've tested it against two different ones and it works fine. I've also sold several of the monitors and have had zero complaints about it. So I would assume... Yeah, I think the PC Junior is pretty much a CGA monitor with a weird IBM connector because IBM. Mm -hmm. um, but they even sell, I believe, or sold a adapter to adapt the PC Junior monitor to a CGA connector. And it's just a passive, you know, it's totally passive uh, adapter. But that's, yeah. that's one of those things that at Computer Reset, the supply of IBM PC Juniors and accessories, you know, quadrupled at least. Mm -hmm. It's funny, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy's uh, retro bar posted in the... Uh, the VCF planning <clears throat> Discord. He posted like a picture of the stuff he's uh, bringing there to, you know, getting rid of. And there's some there's some stuff there that's like, yep, I could tell it came from Computer Reset. There's like a specific specific model of uh, compact mm -hmm. desktops that you know I've got. I think two of them that I picked up from there, and he has yeah, he has two of them with the you know very telling Computer Reset dust on them. Mm -hmm. Jeremy's Vintage Hillbilly Shack Sh Sorry, I was browsing your website, Joe Okay, browse my website The answer, in case it, you, That means you didn't hear my answer The answer was, no, I haven't tested it With an IBM PC Junior monitor But if you were to use the correct adapter The likelihood it would work is greater than 90% yep. You know, Drake uh, Drake is completely right about the SCSI drama Yeah, I mean He's got a Tom's got to fund his ability to uh, continue buying little arcade cabinets somehow. So I know, you know, well, the arcade cabinet was cheap. It's the parts I needed are the expensive parts. So that's where I had to, yeah, sell the blue scuzzy design. So, 
So, okay, that's a bad thing you did, but did you... Now, it could be a good thing if you sent, if you sent Blue Scuzzies to North Korea with their ground plane missing. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was the... Uh, I had to get rid of those ones somehow, so, you know. That is awesome. I love it. I, uh, alt, alt. I, by mistake, sent one out to someone. I thought I got rid of them all. I had a PCB on my desk, apparently. I tossed that PCB in my, with my box and was like, there's someone in the Blue Scuzzy Discord that was like, my my kit's not working. My kit's not working. Sent, yeah, he sent pictures. Everything yeah, looked fine. At one point, I looked and I'm like, wait a minute. That's the ground planeless one. <laughs> yeah, you check, this two, check these two spots with the meter. Nope, not connected. Oh, okay. So he ended up getting another kit, but he ended up bodging it just to try and got his daddy to do a Happy Mac. Hey, Dave. Dave. Right, I need more blue pills over here, Beck. Must be the end of the stream, Dave. Shut up. Is that is that is he like radioactive? Yes, that's Cherenkov radiation. I will be dead in five minutes. <laughs> it's it's X rays coming out of the side of the tube. That's the thing too. Blue blue always blows out. Um, CCD cameras. It always blows out digital cameras. So the, oh, I know. You know Bad. Fine, but like on the camera, it doesn't matter how I adjust that exposure. Like whenever I take a picture on my phone of a blue, like something that's blue, it looks horrible because it just blows it out all the time. It just doesn't know how to adjust. The light Let's see if I can get it to do it. Okay. And apparently, I somehow killed. Like, unlock. Unlock. App. My app died. It just fell over that. Yeah. Oh. There you go, silly. Like, yeah, that's like I have to do that much exposure adjustment in order for you to even like see it and think with the same level of contrast we can. But even that, like, you can see the individual LEDs in here. You see them in there now, but that's so dim, right? Like the actual bright equivalent brightness is somewhere around there, but it's just blown out, right? It's just the way they do things. Rudy's back! Hi, Rudy! It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, autumn. Okay. Automatic. Sure, whatever. Do do the thing automatically. <laughs> yep, there we are. Are all the LED all the LEDs done? Rudy. Mostly the ones I originally planned to do are done. But looking at this, it almost seems like we need some something up here. Now, the logic board doesn't have LEDs on it because this is not the final logic board that's going to go into it. I don't want to mod this board. This is my test testing board. Um, I still need to build the um, the SE reloaded board because that's what's going to go in here. And I almost think we need to somehow put some sort of glow in here anyway. Uh, even though it might be up in your face, we can power that one separately on a higher value resistor, so it's not as bright. But this is just it disappears, right? We need we need something in there, so we'll see. I'll, I will connect it directly to the high voltage output of the of the of the, uh, of the flyback, and we'll see what happens. It's going to be a Booberry Macintosh this Halloween. Yeah, that and the uh, the um, 
the, uh, the pumpkin tosh in the front window with the code that I still need to get from Eric and actually put on there because he did all that work and I haven't done anything with it yet. <laughs> Eric, I have a radiation meter that is incorrectly calibrated you can use. Thank you. We'll do that or something. That blue filter looks great. It's not a blue filter. It's just blue. It's color, man. Glowy apple behind the front panel. Ooh. You know, if you take a blue LED and you print like an apple, you print like you 3D print an apple logo in clear, in clear or something, and then put a blue LED in it, that whole apple will glow blue by itself, like light pipe. And then you could stick it in the front. That's a good idea. I like that. You can put it down here in the corner. What do you guys think? You think that would look good? Oh, that would look awesome. Right down in there. And I just so happen to have the 3D STL file for a <gasps> Apple. So play thingamaboob. Rudy, Rudy wants a laugh, so he wants me to play thingamaboob. Thing there you go, Rudy. There's your laugh, sir. I still need to watch that stream in its entirety. <laughs> oh, that was a that was a good one. That was um, it was with uh, Kate. Yeah. 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 There's not really a lot of room in here to put a big apple. If I leave the floppy drive out of it, because there's actually there's no floppy drive. The, the whole cage is missing. There's space to put one up in here, maybe. You could put the big apple there. But part of me is thinking we could put it in this corner and make it like just the only thing in the front that glows is the apple logo. I think that would be cool. What I, do you like think? How, I like how after you said thing of a boob, you're like, wait, did I just say that? Yeah. Well, you know, like every time there's a there's a woman on the stream is when my brain decides to do stupid, like, <laughs> BS. Like, saying the word boob out loud or whatever. And it's like, brain, don't. That's dumb. Just like, make sure you don't say it, like, at work. Yeah. I think, thankfully, Kate is chill enough to have just looked the other way on that one. Yeah. That's true, but still, it's like, why did I say that? I know. There, there have been times when, like, I've... I don't know how to say this, but, like, there was, like, a tr someone trolling big time in, like, an augmented reality game that I used to play a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And I called them, I'm not going to say the insult, because it would get you instantly demonetized, but it was just an insult off the top of, like, my brain decided, yeah, that's a good insult to use. Well, I got an unholy pile of people calling me a misogynist, because I didn't know that the person who was being a giant troll in this game was a woman and I just used a word that could be construed as misogynist, even though that was not my intent. But even though I tried to say, I just, it was a really wrong place at wrong time, a lot of people were very angry at me over that. And sometimes our brains are just trolls like that, and it's really hard. Like, if you get someone who's like, clearly you meant malice by that, it's really hard to kind of back out of it. Yeah. Earlier, uh... I mean, a couple of, I guess, pop pop culture examples of that is there's the Office episode where uh, Michael says a word that, you know, he thinks means lame, but it, yeah, is against uh, Oscar. And then uh, there's Clerks too, where uh, Randall says a word that he doesn't realize is a little racist. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, those are kind of extreme examples or whatever but i think we have we've all said something that's like after you say it, it's like well i didn't mean it that way but if you sit there and analyze it I'm like well what sometimes, do you mean it and yeah just yeah, yeah. Anyway, sometimes things just happen yeah. it's like you know here see the, the whole thing like my whole philosophy that i've been trying to stick to is like sometimes in the moment 
a lot we say really stupid things that we really should not have said or you know we brands can be trolls and things are going to happen like that it's really how you like address them after the fact and if someone calls you out on it it's like okay yeah i shouldn't have done that i'm sorry and such like that it's like it's the best we can do then you get you get the people who are like i know what i did was wrong and i'm not sorry for it and those are the people who are like yeah, those people can die in a fire. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wasn't going to go that far, but you know what? I agree with you. So uh, let's let's go ahead and immediately change the subject because it's getting morose and I don't want to be depressed before I have to yeah. actually go into the office tomorrow. Um, I just realized that my Apple logo up here that I've been playing with up in the corner of my screen um, casts an apple-shaped like blob onto the far wall. That's awesome. Anyway. Oh, your, uh, your yeah. LED break? Yep, LED break. This guy. That, I'm trying not to point directly at the camera because it'll... Oh, wink. If you pointed it off, it, it, it makes this cool like logo, this whatever. Can I... Where's my LED break? There it is. Yay! Yay! That's awesome. I'm too lazy to move it's, uh... one Get one today. Yep. It, it is. is a very, it is a very fun build, and don't be like me and totally just lose like spare. Yeah, the spare LEDs. Then don't send um, five volts directly to one of the LEDs because that. Uh, makes it cease to be an LED. Yeah, it it it, it, it no like you that. I forgot, I forgot what I did. I think I like I bent a resistor leg out of the way without actually clipping it, and meant to just like test it, but didn't <laughs> think. Oh yeah, this is like bridging. Uh, this is getting the voltage directly. Mm -hmm. Yep, LEDs will pass as much current as you can possibly ever give them. And if that's more than the current that they're supposed to use, they go explode a doodle. They go bad day, bad time. <laughs> Luckily, Joe was the nice guy and hooked me up with a replacement LED. I tried to actually send spares out as well. I tried to uh, count like one or two extra LEDs uh, for each yeah. of them. Just I blew those up and lost the other ones. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, so the other thing I did was uh, I misplaced or I mixed a couple of them together. I'm like, I don't know what color is which. So I went to test them with a bench power supply and I messed up on the bench power supply and sent more voltage than you should. So I should have that one. Mm -hmm. Not infinity. <laughs> Not infinity. Not infinity. Uh, I contemplated, I decided not to, but I contemplated sending you a wrong color for one of the colors. <laughs> uh, that would have been... Just to mess with you. Awesome. Um, but decided against it. Because then because then, in order to undo the joke, I'd have to like ship more LEDs to you again, and then it just would have cost me for the cost of a laugh. And it was like, I don't know if it's worth the shipping for a laugh. So yeah, the, the LED you sent me was part of a... You just threw it in uh, my next order. Yeah, so, yeah, that's great. That's yeah, great. Two cents for the LED. But then you know, it cost me the extra, like, yeah, three bucks for shipping or whatever. Mm -hmm. If it would attract. I'm doom scrolling. I would have uh, gotten some more use out of my, uh, my um machine. My nice and flattering station. Uh, let me just say, if you don't have a desoldering station, life gets so much better once you get a desoldering. Oh yeah. There's there's the there's these levels of of home electronics tinkering that you just you you up your game at each level. The first one is desoldering iron, of course. The next one is helping hands. Then the desoldering station. Then maybe the hot air station, maybe? 
could be the next one. And then so, that like Chungus jump is getting the uh, some sort of uh, microscope set up. Yeah, so I'm hoping um, later this year to get a uh, microscope set up because um, right now I just have one of those cheap like Amazon, you know, little five inch LCD with a microscope. Yeah, and it definitely works. It's definitely good for you know, it's definitely better than no microscope. It's a uh, one one of one of these guys, but it sucks if you're you know working on like a big board because you can't get it under there. So I want to pick up. Um, Drake has one he recommends that's on like AliExpress or Banggood or whatever that looks mm -hmm. yeah looks good. So I want to get one of those. But my order was decent soldering iron. So I got one of those uh, the T the T twelve clones. Yeah, yeah. Eighty buck ones. Um, the ones that if you're not careful will uh, turn on uh, mega mode and glow bright red. Yeah, the Steve ones. Yes. Yeah, so I got one of those. Then when I started doing a lot of blue scuzzies, I picked up a Hacko um, 951. Then I got hot air station. Then an oscilloscope for some reason. Yeah, the silly then scope. The top meter. And then a desoldering station. And I still have no idea how to use my oscilloscope. Even if, uh, yeah, and the oscilloscope is a big is a big step too, and it's helpful when you're doing very specific kinds of tests and things. Um, I'd only say before the oscilloscope, your next step would probably be a, just a multimeter because you can just check basic voltages and things like that. Yeah. I mean, I have a meter. I got a meter before that. Yeah, and I've upgraded my meter a few times. Currently, I use the um, I use a couple. I have the. Uh, Kyrie's KM601. KM601, yeah. And then I have a uh, a cheap, you know, cheap Amazon one, Astro AI, I think it is, or whatever. Kyrie lives in the living room for the arcade project. But the main thing now is I need to get it painted, which is the whole rabbit hole I don't really want to go down. Because that means I have to take it outside and paint it. And, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Papers and yeah, bribe some of pizza and beer to help me move it outside. Oh wow! Here is you go. Here, 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 here is you go. Yeah, I English good. Nice. I found my first oscilloscope on the sidewalk outside of Fry's in Palo Alto with a sign on it saying "free works." Take it. Done. Yes. So the scope, uh, one of my one of my friends, he's like a old school computer guy. Like he does like North Star Horizons and like um, saw the Saul, what is Saul twenty or whatever. Mm -hmm. All those like very early, yeah, CPM machines. So I was helping with something, and he's like, "Do you have an oscilloscope?" And I'm like, "No." He's like, "Do you know how to use an oscilloscope?" And I'm like. No, but I know the idea of it. And he's like, hold on. And he pulls out from his closet a um an old like CRT scope and uh oh. yeah, like a book on how to do yeah, you know, how to do it and stuff. And I realized like I don't have room on my desk for this thing. So then I was like, Well, I've been looking at a scope anyway, so I bought one of those um Rigol. Yep. Nice yeah, channel. 54? Yep. yep. Or no, I got the 1202. Oh, the 1202. Okay. But two, two channel, 200, mega, 200 megahertz. Um, the three right. times I've used it, it's, yeah, yeah. been cool. Folks were asking about helping hands and stuff. And this is a quad, a set of quad helping hands, which is, uh, is uh, arguably better. Um, but... Uh, I have such limited space that I ended up never using it, and now it acts as a counter. Yeah, my, my helping hands lives under my desk, and it's a, uh, a quad one. And it's, yeah. I mean, it does a good job. I mean, this is not a bad product at all, but in my specific case, it's just it's it's counterweight, along with my backup drive, which is sitting right here that's not in a good spot right now, but whatever. 
That reminds me. I drive wouldn't work wirelessly. I have a nice little drive here that unfortunately I destroyed the casing getting into. Thankfully, I have a friend who, um, I have a friend, not Joe this time, but I have a friend. Hey, we're still friends. I have multiple, but now this, I have this one, this one friend of mine who does like CNC machining and such. Yeah, and he was yeah. like, bring, bring the drive over here. I will like, May I will like try to make something that it'll fit into. That's cool. But he was like, I remember when um, so this friend was actually like, hey, I want I want to like borrow your DB twenty five blue scuzzy because I want to make like an aluminum case for it. Wow. I was just like, that's overkill, but I like the way you think. So um. A few of the manufacturers, but I know uh, Shapeways, they, you can get like a single, you know, aluminum or uh, plate, I guess it's probably plated, like metal, yeah, metal thing made from an STL file. So mm -hmm. you can get like a gold, you can get a gold blue SCSI case if you wanted to. Yes. And I, I mean, the price is crazy. I think it was like a hundred something bucks. For hey, one, you, know, you pay me a hundred bucks and I'll print it in gold filament. <laughs> uh, asterisk does not contain the actual element gold. Bye, Eric. Have a good evening. Yes, but yeah, do probably head out in a few once I finish. Yeah, I'm about so ready. I'm rockingly, I'm yeah. shockingly not dead yet from the vaccine, so. <laughs> Yeah, it's all the same p.m. there. <laughs> what was that? I think it's 8 p.m. there. It's like 11 p.m. here. So Yeah, I've got eight hours of driving ahead of me tomorrow. So Yeah. And then another, I think, five hours the next day. So I should probably yeah. get some kind of sleep. And the way back is going to be fun because taking a couple of detours, we'll make a big, big detour to Ronland. Ron Land. When's VCF Midwest starting again? Uh, Saturday. Oh boy. So I'm uh, I'm driving out there. So I'm starting to drive tomorrow. Staying overnight in um, <laughs> Ohio. I oh, wish I could like stow away in Garth's bag and just go to Midwest. You're yeah, uh, you said you're in Akron. Yeah, you're Akron area. Yeah, um, lock your car and don't leave. Don't leave the hotel. Yeah, no, I'm 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 staying uh a little bit past Akron. I forgot the uh forgot the town, but let me Massillon. Mm. Also, like I cannot wait for VCF Midwest because the amount like, with how much Eric has been teasing Blue Scuzzy stuff, I'm just like, okay, it's going to be something big. I have and I to cannot wait. To, to show up with some crazy thing, yeah, that he hasn't even told us. Oh, it's... Oh, I'm saying in, in, uh, yeah, you already go to, go to bed, though, so... Avery. Avery, Ohio? Yeah. Oh, Avery, Ohio. So I guess that's a bit that's a bit past background that's... Nor it's oh, above it's funny. I Google Avery, Ohio, and the first hit is a Google Maps hit showing like 10, um, uh, 10 hotels. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> one of those trips. So, it's a bit, a bit above Norwalk, Ohio. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's a bit the yeah. Trip. Oh, no, I forgot my Google was plugged in and you just triggered it. <laughs> Google. Uh, I wish there was a way to be like, I wish there were, like, slight sidebar here. I don't get why voice assistants are so dumb that you can't change the hot word. So with um, the Amazon one, you can change it, but only do a few predefined Ooh. things. Um, Better than nothing. You know, there's the uh, the word... That is the name of it. Yeah, the product name. Then you can have Amazon. Then you can have um, 
computer is the, I think the third one. And I was like, oh, computer, that's going to be so cool. I can be like, computer, what's the weather? Oh, no. it's, it's a horrible idea because um, you watch YouTube videos and Joe's like, hi, welcome to Joe's Computer Museum. I'm oh, Joe. No. This is my computer museum. You're like, it's like, I don't know. What do you mean by museum? Ah, uh, See, so I got a bit of a small tirade here. So because I switched up everything, <clears throat> I, sw <laughs> I switched up everything when I got my Xbox Series X. So no longer do I have my NVIDIA Shield plugged in. So I can't just wake up the TV and everything in one go and I want to watch like YouTube or something on the TV. So what I have to, what I thought would be a good way to get around that is with the because the Xbox and my TV are both connected up into you know the voice assistants. So I could be like, okay, I could say one command and the voice assistant should be able to wake the TV, manually switch the inputs because I can't do that anymore. And then the X wake the Xbox, and the Xbox will tell the um, the HDMI switch to switch the proper input, and it should be good, right? Well, no. Amazon is dumb with this; it'll only let you do one. So all those things count as custom commands, and one of them, like you can only do one custom command. So I can have it do maybe up to two things with some creative string along. But not three, so I would fall short. But Google could do all three, no problem. So it was like, okay, well, I have to use the Google now. The problem with the Google is there's one hot word, and everything triggers it. So I like uh, how you, when you say the Google, it's. I mean, I know what you mean. You're meaning the Google Home Assistant. But it just sounds like you're like an old person trying to describe the internet. It's like you go to the Google. I, I went to the face space and 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 went to the Twatter Twat website and 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 there's some guy on there talking about bad things. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness gracious! But yeah, like, how do you do that with Amazon? Can, isn't there like some sort of like like home automation skills BS you could do so you could create a skill and then you create a command that launches the skill that does all the things? Yeah. No, so the skills are mostly for interacting with products that support like you grab a skill to enable like commands to work with the Xbox, for example. Okay. Well, you can do um, I forgot what they call it, like phrases or something, because I know like. My friend has one that's like I'm leaving the house, and it, like it turns <clears> off all the lights, and it yeah does this, and turns off the AC, and it you know flushes the toilet, and he, he legit has a because uh, his toilet's one of those like Toto, uh, you know Japanese toilets with a <laughs> remote, so he he, bought, he basically bought <laughs> a um something like a universal like TV control thing that's meant for TVs, but it just said you know it sends infrared. So he like captured the infrared signal for flushing the toilet. So he could literally say, "Yeah, Amazon flushes the toilet," and it would it actually flushes the toilet. I'm wondering if that's something you could do, Zodian. If you could create get a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino or anything like that, whose job it is to to electronically click all the buttons for you, you need to click, but then. Oh. So here's the fun part. Technically, everything should just work because the Xbox has uh, CEC support, so it should be able to tell my HDMI switch, okay, switch over to this input, and then tell the TV, okay, turn on and switch to the HDMI switch, but the problem is I also have this going via an HDMI splitter to my capture card. So the, the splitter that sits in line, unfortunately, what happens is it intercepts the, the CEC signals so they never get to the TV. And look well, for stop, a splitter. Stop. Right? stop. Just stop. Just stop doing it. <laughs> I have looked for splitters that will allow the CEC skills to go through, 
but they cost an arm and a leg, and I'm not ready for that. <laughs> yeah. But the whole bathroom thing, by the way, before I forget about this and before I forget it's in my clipboard, um, I'm going to post a Draga 1 video that that thing reminded me of. And it's a beautiful video. Rudy's like, voice activated toilet flush? I flush every time I use it. Sorry, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, but like, well, so his bathroom is awesome because like, his, you know, he's like motion sensors for his lights and stuff. So, like, you walk in, the toilet seat lifts up automatically. The lights, oh, turn, Adam. Jesus. And then, yeah, he has like the motion sensor hook, so hooked up to the Alexa, so it will say like, "Welcome, I am honored to accept your waste." Yeah. Well, it has like a glow like underneath the rim, and then so... you, can just, you know, after you use it, you can say, "Yeah, flush the toilet." And it will, you know, flush the toilet. And he has like a uh, motion, you know, sink, you know, a touchless, you know, sink, and a touchless like soap dispenser. And he's saving up for a um, one of those fancy, yeah, you know, those fancy dryers, the fancy uh, hand dryers. So basically, he has a pretty cool setup. Like <laughs> you know, the best. Is this a bad? Is this a bad time to mention that somebody actually made an Alexa skill that allows it to fart on command. <laughs> In addition, you do it Mark Rober style and you connect it to a, a fart canister. <laughs> somewhere, but it, but the, but here's the thing is the fart canisters are spread around the house and it does one randomly. <laughs> oh no. You don't know. Until you know, and then whoever smelt it dealt it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is terrible! These are terrible ideas, all of them. I love terrible ideas. That's where that's where multi-billion-dollar uh, industries come from. The farting is baked into a lot. Wait, oh, it's wow. standard now? No way. Yeah, I think it is now. <laughs> hey, Alexa, fart. I didn't Jokes hear you like, make a noise. My 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 device is on the other side of the house. You'll have to yell that yeah, louder than that, Joe. Joe, how does the basement smell now? Like broken dreams and sadness. Like like flux and bad decisions. Yeah. Although that was a good decision. It's pretty. <laughs> Exhibit A in divorce filing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh man. It's 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 like the poop on the bed, but like different. My, uh, my anyway, moving on. Jesus. You not into you all that work, man. That's crazy. Well, I figure oh. even if ones I don't sell, you just I'll still have for you yeah, know future stocks. I love yeah. I love how your uh, your your stock was like stock soon on the twentieth or something like that. Yeah, like, oh. well, I have a banner on my um, the top of my page that says like I'm going to VCF. If you want to buy a blue scuzzy, you can buy it there. Otherwise, you can get it from you know any of the other countless people or wait till the twentieth. Having three in stock. Did I really sell that many? Special. If you bring if you bring googly eyes to my booth, you get twenty percent off. <laughs> you got to do it now, Tom. <laughs> no, because I'm scared people are going to take me up on that. Um, probably. You know what's funny is like, I was scared people were going to like, people were going to take me up crazily on my offer. Hey, if you are coming to VCF West, I will upgrade your blue SCSI for you. Only one person came by and they had an F4, and I was like, I don't know at this juncture how to upgrade those at the moment, but yeah. Either my code is wrong or his code is wrong. Whose code versus? Uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the code on bluescuzzy.com that oh. is the inventory. It I'm checks. Sure I, have three, uh, I have five of something. 
I don't have one. Checks a, uh, there's a file it checks for. Oh, yeah, I know. I know how it works. It just okay. one of the codes. <laughs> my code or his code. I blame your code. It probably can. Yeah. You know, okay, so this, this, the whole code thing reminds me of a uh, question I would like to ask. What is the likelihood? Because I much prefer this method of updating things. What is the likelihood that the blue study can su will or can support updating via placing just a file on the root of the SD card? I mean, I'm sure it can happen. I don't know if that's, if it's a, um, you know, how, uh, like how much of a priority it is versus, you know, some of the other stuff that Eric's been working on. He did the he did the um, USB update, which is a huge uh, time saver, and yeah. it's nice to you know be able to update just with the USB port or with the USB cable rather than needing the ST link and you know figuring that out. It yeah, it may, you can just bust through bust through the updates a lot. Yeah, because like currently the uh, the USB updater. I mean, Eric himself told me the USB updater is a bit jank at the moment, but eventually yeah. it'll get better. Yeah, he's been working on it, and um, I mean, the nice thing is with the you once you have the USB firmware, it just shows up as a DFU device, mm -hmm. so you can use like any DFU uh, utility. So on the Mac, I've been using. Um, we see one. Oh, okay. I'm using it. But there is an application that, um, let's see if it's on my list. I do know I'm so happy that the blue does he like, after you do the update, it'll like automatically, like for the first couple of seconds, it'll be like, okay, I'm looking for a connection to update if need be. Then it goes into its normal loop. So that way you don't have to play with the damn jumpers anymore. Oh yeah, yeah. It's nice because yeah, if you have a um, utility, either the you know the um, command file that he has on his thing that looks for it, or one of these like DFU uh, utilities, um, yeah, you can just like plug it in and just as long as it's looking for it, it will just flash it, which is nice mm -hmm. rather than having to deal with the jumpers. Um, uh. Uh, sorry. I'm just it's, trying to see if I have it. I'm editing PHP code. Yeah, look, I, I, I do like the current, like, as jank as it may be, I do find the current updater kind of fun. Now it's like 1 800 blue does he? Yeah. Yeah, and so I, I edited that section out of the, uh, the command that I use just because. If I'm flashing, you know, twenty blue pills, yeah, I'm going to wait, you know, twenty times five seconds. I've edited mine. I think, what does it say? Now, like something like now connected to Eric Elgison's dank meme stash. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you guys, what is this? What's this? Adam's like, I'm not bringing any tools except the bottle opener. That's the way to go. Yeah. Crack, crack open a cool one for VCF. Yeah, on um, Dave's channel on Sunday, because I'm guessing he's going to still do a Sunday uh, live stream. I'm probably going to end up joining and just trying to yeah, do a quick walk around VCF just to yeah, show you. Can you join StreamYard from a phone? I assume so. Yes. You know you're making a question, it, but I assume... I assume you can. Hi, NG Layton. All right, I've got some packing to do and then sleeping to do, so... Thanks for letting me crash your stream. <laughs> Anytime. Crash? You just made it better. Thank you for allowing me to ship you 900 stickers that you are going to randomly deposit <laughs> on BCF Midwest. Oh, yeah, just for context and how big 900 stickers is. Oh, so, my God. And, I packed uh, it off to the end. It is stupid. <laughs> yes. I mean, 
that's how you know thick the box is. Like it's like a box you would get like a cell phone in, just full of stickers. I, I was expecting like a small pad, you know, a padded. Uh, I expect like an envelope like this to be like shoved with stickers. Like nope. <laughs> the last VCF Midwest I gave, uh, I ended up getting stickers sent to. I don't know who sent them to, but basically they were at the uh, Mac Effects booth and and they were not enough. They were gone in a couple hours. They just oh, disappeared. Wow. So yeah. this time I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get you tons. No so one, they, no one took my order, stickers at VCF. If there are any leftovers, I will bring them by. But yeah, yeah I'll leave. I mean, I'll be handing them out. I'll um. Leave them on Rodden's table. I'll leave, Hi, Adam. I'll, you know, bribe Mac effects to let me leave some at his table. Um, PR. Like, hey, Clint. Hey, if you have any spares, send them to me, too, because I need to sticker bomb this Titanian power book. Oh, yeah, and I've got a... Uh, yeah, I'll send you a couple of stickers, actually, because I have a limited edition... Blue Scuzzy Assemble sticker, Ooh. courtesy of Drake. Yay. I need one. that. So you're getting one, and Joe can have one. I mean, if anyone else that's watching wants one that's not going to VCF, uh, shoot me a DM on Twitter. Or I want one. I will be shooting you a DM. Uh, I, just, I, I really want. I want someone to like just sell me a stack of blue scuzzy stickers at this point. Oh, uh, I mean, if you want a stack of blue scuzzy stickers. Oh no! <laughs> like, I'm gonna regret having said this, have aren't I? I'll send. Well, I I order them, you know. You order them down at like two fifty at a time or something, or yeah. Also, uh, Joe, you have a question in the chat regarding yeah, the blue I was waiting scuzzy. For you guys to uh, finish your conversation yeah. so I can do that. <laughs> I yeah, figured yeah. We'll let you let you answer it, so <laughs> they aren't waiting too long. A couple questions there, uh, Jer or uh, yeah, Jeremy's asking: Does it really cost ten dollars to ship a package that's less than four ounces? It does if you're talking about my website and you're using the um, flat rate shipping. If you use the USPS first class, it's going to cost you about four dollars, four or five. Um, second question: Hey Joe, I bought a blue scuzzy kit from you in May. Does it have the USB bootloader? May. It should, yes. It was April that we did the the. Was it April or June, July that we did the bootloader? Well, I can tell you right now. April. Um, it was April. So if you quick. bought it in May, it should have the USB bootloader. The easiest way you can you'll know that is the moment the blue scuzzy turns on. If the light blinks about like this, that means it's got and it does it about five or six times before going out and then doing other things, that means that you likely have the USB bootloader. If you can also check the log file. Well, for the USB bootloader, it's a very quick flash. Yeah, it's like ticka 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 like that, and then it's off. Let me see if I have... Interesting. So, yeah... Here's the thing, uh, Tim. If you don't, if you, if it does not have the USB bootloader for five dollars and fifty cents, plus the cost of whatever it costs you to ship it to me, I will do a flash for you and send it back for you. I will make sure it has the most up to date firmware. Uh, all Blue yeah. sellers provide the firmware update service for you, so no yeah. problem at all. Or if you're going to VCF Midwest, yeah, I'll, um, yeah, if you're going to VCF Midwest. I'll be there. Eric Helgeson will be there, and um, Jay, who is a, another blue scuzzy uh, blue scuzzy seller, will yeah. be there, and we'll all have blue scuzzy t-shirts. So it should be easy to find us. Um, and at least myself and Eric will have our laptops and a way to flash them. I'm assuming Jay will. Hold on, t-shirts. Oh, that was a secret. <laughs> Jeremy, uh, um, about your weird shipping thing, contact me on Twitter or something. We'll figure it out. That's it. That's all I had to say. <laughs> um, please tell me these t-shirts might may or may not be available after the event. They are is exclusive, 
Well, I'll do some asterisks around this. Eric ordered some just because there was a, um, I think there was a sale on, I forgot if it was Sticker Mule or one Probably of those. Sticker you know, Mule. One of those, uh, yeah, quick t shirt manufacturers. I am sure, I don't think he's planning on selling t shirts, and I don't think any of the sellers are, yeah, planning on selling t shirts. Joe, maybe, because he has his, yeah, neat, yeah, neat integration with, yeah. All you got to do is send me a picture and I can make t-shirts. Anyway. But, um, I'm, I mean, I'm sure if you asked Eric, he'd send you the um, you know, the file or whatever and you can just, you know, upload it to you know, Sticker Mule or whoever and get some, you know, get t-shirts made. But, I know yeah, I've been promotions from them like, hey, print t-shirts from dirt cheap. I have a uh, t-shirt of, it's a piece of artwork that Drake made of like a bunch of like outlines of different Macs and I got a, a t-shirt printed for from them and it's been good I've put it through a wash like yeah probably 12 or 15 times and hasn't you know hasn't faded at all which is nice hmm. very right. interesting off now so I'll talk to you guys later yep okay. I'll see you Bye, Tom. week Joe less than that just, just five more minutes. Five more minutes. Yeah, five more minutes. Yeah, I'm the, I'm on the other side of this now. Okay, bye. <laughs> yeah. All right, see you guys. See ya. Bye, Tom. Yeah. Thank God he's no wait. That's that, <laughs> that's Ron's joke. Sorry, I'm not allowed to use that joke. Boo! Stolen jokes. But uh, actually, I'm going to call it too because it's 11:30 here on the east coast of the Ohio lands, and. Um, I actually have an actual on-site appointment tomorrow. So I actually have to like go to bed and actually, oh, actually seven times more. Um, so, yep, I'm going to, uh, we're at about four hours. I'm going to go ahead and call it. Thank you to Zodium for stopping by and no the problem. wonderful extra addition to the stream. Thank you for Tom again, who just took off for stopping by. And thank you to all these super awesome people who stopped by the chat over the entire course of the thingamadoodle. Thingamaboob over the course of all. Thingamaboob. Uh, who uh, did the thing and commented and added all their wonderful color commentary on the side and such and stuff. So um, remember, hit the like button, uh, hit subscribe. It helps the YouTube do the thing to let the thing know that the thing occurs. Uh, and remember, follow me at Museum Joe. Get cool, uh, cool things like um, like uh, keyboard encoders and these cool little light doodles over at JCM-1.com. It helps keep the operation going and uh, having me be able to buy cool things like this awesome case to show off to you all again. Thank you all and have a great evening. Bye, everybody. Bye.